Ladies and gentlemen, FCAT says we're live and they pointed a finger at us saying so. Tonight is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. Tonight is a presentation from the folks at uh, Birch Design Group about uh, tr School Street and some of the things that can and cannot be done at School Street. We have a little bit of appointing to do, actually a couple of appointments to do. Uh, we're going to talk about getting rid of a fire department in Crown Victoria. Anyone interested? After we vote, who doesn't want a fire department in Crown Victoria? <laughs> which was a police department in Crown Victoria, which was some, you know, anyway, it was a Victoria. Uh, so that said, uh, we also have appointment to the regional planning board uh, rep uh, from the board, our board here. We're going to start with a little bit of a public hearing. I'm sorry, not a hearing, a public presentation. And that presentation is about the visioning elements of the uh, school street. But before we get started, I'd like to uh, take a quick minute. Uh, there are a couple of folks who passed away this past weekend uh, and last week. Uh, so um, uh, Marjorie Yurkovitz passed away, and uh, both of uh, Richie Stryker's senior and his spouse passed away within a five-day period in the last week. And I think it's important to pause and think about that. Um, so uh, with that, our heartfelt wishes to uh, Richie, his uh, family, and then uh, Marge, and uh, she'll soon uh, be down with her with her sweetheart. Okay, Tom, David, anything you want to add before we rock in with presentations? Oh, it's a little rip. I kept ready. All right. Thank you, Carlos. Um, I think it would be better if we can just slow it down. The yeah, process. same one, George. It's not your phone, but thank you. Thank you, that would be great. Excellent. First of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Carlos Nieto. I'm a landscape architect with the Berkshire Design Group. Um, and I've been working, I'm a resident of the town, and I've been working in different projects in town. Um, and this is the latest project that I've been kind of working on with the uh, Trails and Pathways Committee, which um, I guess the initial uh, objective of, of this project was to uh, improve the uh, walkability in School Street, have a sidewalk that was ADA accessible. Um, extension of the sidewalk to be ADA accessible and try to meet some accessibility all the way down to the uh, boat, boat ramp. Um, in addition to that, um, within that same, we, we, let's, we, we thought of, let's look at the entirety of School Street and other possibilities that can happen in School Street um, and improvements that can happen. Um, in the beginning of, of the presentation, we went through a kind of an analysis of the site, analysis of School Street, and so elements are there, some things that are uh, positive, some things that might be looked at as not the most positive things in how the street is designed as it is right now. Um, and then we'll go through three scenarios of different types of improvements that could be done to School Street. Um, and I want to give the first thing I want to say is that none of these are any, any way, shape, or form a final concept whatsoever. This is the first stab at showing what can happen in School Street, uh, different types of streetscape, and I can go into the definition of what streetscape is, but different types of designs for the street itself, and looking at what can happen within the right of way or the area of the road that's on by the town. Carlos, if I could just one second? Yes. Sure, this was predicated on grant application for right. ADA access Correct. specifically to this area because of the concentration of municipal buildings excuse me, municipal buildings as well as as well as well access to now the Riverwalk. Correct. Correct. So right now the town in and of itself is in that exploratory phase. Exactly. Great. I want to so, just clarify that. Yeah. And like I said, <clears throat> what I want to make sure I'm emphasizing that there's no final concepts. Each one of these concepts have elements that could be used and grabbed on and said, this is something that we want to do. All the concepts might have elements that you don't want to see. And then the intention of this is to go to the next step where we keep developing these three concepts or two or one concept, keep moving forward and then basically present again and have some consensus to eventually come up with one final concept that will uh, have consensus with the town and include some of the elements that you see in some of these concepts that we're showing today. 
I could, Carlos. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about, uh, with regard to concept, there are specific areas of accessibility that are that are defined, mm -hmm. right? And we, we, we're working inside a certain framework for elements of all of this that we're seeing. In addition to that, there also was the opportunity of not just looking at accessibility on the sidewalks, yep. but also looking at the whole the whole street the and scape. how it, it, yeah. it works out. So you're going to see a combination of, of, of these two, two kind of goals. Great. And traffic calming was another issue that we wanted yeah. to address. Good point. Yeah, Speed I, issues. And we'll go through some of these objectives as you see the first kind of the site analysis that, that we prepared for. Um, and what you're seeing here is an aerial image of School Street. Um, and I will start, um, what we did was we did a, and we'll see on the next one, we did a photo inventory of the site. I, the office, me and, and another co-worker walked the site and looked at different areas within School Street. Kind of we divided uh, School Street in separate sections, which um, you will see throughout the presentation, and what um, what things we could do in each one of these sections to improve School Street and, and have some other ideas of how to change School Street for, for the better. So, um, but within our existing conditions analysis, what again we were cataloging what we had and and the elements that we saw that you know had some issues that we could uh, approach with the concepts that you see later. So starting um, right at the intersection uh, with uh, Route 47, as you go into um, School Street itself, uh, one of the first things that we noticed was that the uh, width of that entrance in itself is it's much more than it should be for the size of the street that, that School Street is. And also, it was, it's wide enough, it's about 47 feet, um, and, and the widest point of that, what we call a curb cut, or, or uh, the intersection of the, the streets. And we saw that as an, as, as an issue. Um, it, it is the scale of it for some pedestrians to be moving through it. Um, it's, it's quite large. Um, also, there is a, a, a amount of setback within the uh, sidewalk and the actual intersection that uh, creates uh, the issue. And I, anybody who's uh, driven in school street and trying to go out, you get to the where the crosswalk is but you can't really see any of the traffic or any, any uh, the cars that are coming in on, on Route 47. So you end up stopping and then kind of uh, yeah, pushing yourself cool. forward. Um, and we saw that as an issue. Um, again, um, within that same realm, we have sight line, uh, which is what we call when you get to an intersection and you can't really see where you're going or if there are cars coming your way. Um, some of this has to do with the parking uh, that's right next to it. Um, and, and as we keep going, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, in that entrance, um, we also, again, observing uh, the red line that you see right there. I can keep my pulse. <laughs> the red line that you see right there um, is, is the right of way line. It's the area uh, that is owned by the town for the street. Um, so some, one of the observations we had on that entrance is that the right of way is really wide and, and part of the corner store, um, what's the corner store parking right now and a lot of that green area, it's actually part of the right of way. So that's, um, again, an observation after uh, there was a survey uh, done for the property lines and we kind of uh, overlaid it with the aerial images and the property lines and everything else. Um, we could see that it was you know, that, that is something that's going on in the entrance um, that will shape how we design this, this area. Um, the, also, one thing that's important is that the back of the corner store is there's parking there and there's also, it's kind of the loading area for the parking lot, so it's something that we have to acknowledge as we kept going uh, within the, uh, this project. Um, as we keep moving forward, um, you know, the next section of, of, uh, that we kind of separated from School Street is Kind of from um, the end of the parking lot of the uh, of the uh, corner store, and then uh, I would say the beginning of the library building. So it's the area right in front of the uh, town offices, what, what you see out of the window if you were to look out. Um, and what we identified uh, again, some of the issues that we identified there was that the there's a, a, a area of parking right in front of the veterans memorial and the entrance to the actual uh, town offices. Um, that are physically blocking and really doesn't identify as a landmark or an entrance uh, for the for the uh, actual town office. So as you're driving in, 
you see a set of cars right on your right, but you really don't see a clear entrance or where it is that the town offices you know, really are at. There is, and again, this is um, of the existing conditions, the Veterans Memorial, at, for, because of its design, it has mounds and has trees. So that also exacerbates that issue that there's no clear view onto the uh, town offices as you're driving in. And, and we thought that that was important to try to uh, improve that. There are 17 parking spaces right now, and I thought that was, again, one of the observations is that that's what's there now. I mean, in any of these other concepts that we see, we're gonna try to keep, keep those parking spaces there. Um, we see them as, uh, as being used, and uh, we don't wanna reduce parking spaces in, in the park or in this area of, of the town where a lot of these uh, uses are happening. Uh, the next section um, that we, in, and still, as we keep moving into this area, we'll see later, um, the width of the road still is beyond 22 feet. Um, it's about almost 25 feet. Um, so there is some, some space for reduction of the width of the street to uh, promote some traffic calming. Um, as we keep moving back, uh, again, acknowledging that there are several uh, utilities. There are catch basins, and there's a, actually right there where I have my pointer, there's a uh, water hydrant. So it's something that we have to keep into, a, uh, into consideration as we keep designing that we don't interrupt the existing utilities. Um, and one main element is this, there's a large number of uh, overhead wires that are going um, in, in the all, all the way through School Street. There's six posts in the beginning of School Street up to where basically the town offices are. And then it transitions back to the opposite side, one of the, um, I would say the south side, uh, where those utility um, poles are. And, that's where power is being distributed for the whole street. So um, something to take into consideration, all those utilities in there. As we move after the actual library, the, um, the actual road uh, narrows down. And, and as you will see in some of the photographs, there is a more of a intimate or a more human scale to the street as you keep moving forward. And it, 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 it's one of the observations we had. The right of way in this area becomes very tight on the north side. And in the south side, there are some, um, we observed again that um, probably pre-existing uh, conditions that there are some buildings and, um, that are very close to the property line um, or to the right of way line. Again, an observation is something that has happened in the past, and, uh, but we wanted to make sure that people understood where the actual right of way lines were. Um, as we got there. The last part of the uh, area that we looked at was uh, basically the end of School Street and where it connects then now to the uh, to the old ramp itself. Um, and we looked at the fact that on the north side, there is opportunity to, to have some type of connection because there's no uh, drainage. Um, it's basically the area where less things are happening on the south side of the boat ramp itself. It's, the, it's all the drainage for the actual um, boat ramp road that goes, you know, goes down to the road. So we, we acknowledge that the south is gonna be very hard to develop some type of sidewalk and the north is probably the area where we would need to uh, develop a sidewalk that would connect to back to the to the new uh, river path. Carlos, yes. Excuse me. Can you just explain for everybody what the right of way line means? Yes. So as I said, a couple. The right of way is the area of the road that's defined by two property lines, one on the north and one on the south. In this case. And that is the area of the road that's owned by the by the town, and that's where the project that we are proposing would happen. Everything would happen in town in town owned land. Um, and if you anybody has a question, please raise their hands and I can explain a little bit more what right of way is. Yeah. Hi, I completely understand the right of way. Can we just acknowledge that they're not buildings, they're houses, so most of them there since eighteen twelve. Mm -hmm. So that anything that we're talking about that's going down these streets, they are whether or not the town owns the land going into and sometimes up to the steps of houses where people have lived for a long time and these are houses that are historical that have been there from 18, most of them are like 1800, yeah. I will definitely acknowledge that, that is very true and I would say that the majority of the, yeah. all these houses to the south are, are all residential houses at this point except for the, for the uh, um, corner store. Um, most of the municipal buildings are on this side and then there's still some residential uh, buildings that are still there. And this is the his, uh, historical uh, school street. It, it's, it's you know uh, part of the history of Sunderland. All these buildings are, are part of that. Sure. Uh, 
Carlos, do you know the zoning of that area? So that's the one of the, and, and you see on the legend, uh, so there is a dash line that goes all the way around and that uh, signifies, it identifies the zoning area, which in this case is a uh, town center, uh, village. Village. Village, village center, center. Sorry. Um, zoning district, which has um, a ability of having mixed uses there from residential to commercial. So it does allow for commercial and residential? Yes. Okay. Uh, the commercial would be, if I'm not mistaken, I did, we didn't go into deep into the zoning analysis because we're looking at right away at yep. streetscape, which would not really affect any of this, but my understanding is that with special permit, you could do commercial in this area. Thank you, Carl. So again, this is a, a, an overview of, of some of the issues that we found um, by observing uh, the conditions of School Street um, on the top left is that really wide entrance that we were uh, uh, talking about just a minute ago. Uh, it's that first uh, kind of section of, of, of the uh, school street. Uh, now we're looking at the kind of the second area of school street. Um, those uh, electric uh, or power uh, line posts that we have are you know, a predominant feature in, in school street. And then the parking areas that we were talking about right in front of the uh, town offices. Uh, as we keep moving forward, this is the area of the library and some of that parking and kind of these, uh, there's one, one of these uh, posts that is right in the middle of kind of the parking area, not the best uh, organization of the parking and those utility posts. And then the la last image we're seeing here is that mo moment when we pass the uh, library and the road narrows down and it becomes much more residential as we keep moving forward in that, from that point on. So this orientation is all, sorry, yes. this orientation is all looking west. Yes, and it, this is, we're all looking west. Right. I have to say, this has all been residential. I've seen many, a lot of changes on School Street, very negative changes that really are impacting our families. Sure. Okay. And, and when I meant rest, from that point residential, there are more um, town offices and town buildings just before this session. I'm acknowledging that there is residential buildings on the on the north side, um, oh sorry, on the south side of the street. So as we keep moving, I'm going to show you three, again, very early mm -hmm. schematic concepts of, of changes that look into the issues that we just pointed out of the existing conditions. Um, one of them, as we start off again from, from the entrance, um, we there is an existing project on the roof that um, changes on, on, on Route 47. What you're seeing here, the intersection, so this pedestrian access, the change in how the parking is right there, and uh, part, partly some of that uh, green space there, that's part of that project that I've included in this uh, future view of what School Street's going to be. So because it, there are some of the changes that are being proposed uh, for pedestrian uh, connection between right. one side of uh, of Main Street and the other side of Main Street. And so that's the North Main Street project impact you're talking about with mm -hmm. those two uh, uh, pedestrian, pedestrian crossing, bump mm -hmm. outs, etc. The school street, the North Main Street project doesn't go past School Street to the it, south. Exactly. It just basically yeah. stops right stops there. Right so, there. Right. I, and I wanted to add that because I think that right. uh, intersection has fixed some of the issues that I started pointing right. out at the beginning. Yep, good point. Um, and that's still in process still. So mm -hmm. it's, this, uh, it's not a final set of plans yet, but I, I want to include those in there. 26 or 23. Um, in this first uh, concept, again, we reduce the uh, width of the actual entrance. Um, again, it was one of the uh, issues that were brought up okay. to us that there was too much uh, space between yep. those two. Uh, Thank you for pedestrian uh, connectivity there. And also uh, bringing back the sidewalk just slightly so that um, now it matches more with, the, with where that crosswalk is gonna happen. And then um, improving basically that, that uh, curve up there, uh, making it a little bit more um, pedestrian friendly uh, before it was so wide that you didn't know if, if a car was coming and you were kind of still walking through there. 
One of the other changes that we've done here by reducing the width of the road, now we have a larger planting uh, strip on, or green, green strip on, on one side of School Street, which can provide some areas for more plantings um, that push um, any plantings outside of where those power lines are. Originally, when I was approached, there was a question about if can we put those power lines underground for the extent of School Street. And that was one of the first things that I did was contact the power company. And they came back and said that there is, it is a possibility, but the cost of it is extremely, extremely high because there is so much uh, data cables, power cables, and transformers, and all these individual um, electric connections that would have to be redone. And we're talking about in the millions of dollars uh, type of range. Um, I've, I'm still, I still have communications with the power company because in the other, in these concepts, we've moved some of these posts to make um, some of the changes that we've done here and move them in a way that they work better uh, in the street. And we have one of the concepts that moves all our posts to the opposite side of the street. So we are still under communications with the power company. Yes? I just think that we should point out for the purpose of these concepts that the north side of the street is primarily uh, rental property with large front yards. And the south side of the street is primarily owner occupied with very small front yards. Okay. So talking about putting utility poles and sidewalks on that side of the street, basically you're cutting down people's front yards. You know, if you go by the right of way proposal, you know, that puts a sidewalk and telephone poles 20 feet from my bedroom window. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And this is the type of feedback, obviously, this is the type of feedback that we wanted to get. Um, because if we kind of go through the motions of doing this and we present final concepts and they don't work, it's it's meaningless. So I appreciate any input at this point and please speak up. Um, that is a good point on, on the, I, I, very good point and I didn't know that there was one side that was more rentals and the other side was more uh, property owned. So I think that's a, a good detail to know when you're doing this plan. So with respect to the north side, <laughs> You go from library to a single home to municipal spaces to three individual homes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether qualifying it as exclusively as rentals. I mean, there's a large. Well, I, well, I, I look. I look at the total. I look at the total land mass, and I see it municipal almost exclusively from the corner to the parking lot west side of the of the library with one home in there. Then there are three there. The end one we know is owner occupied. So primarily means yeah. two. Yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. Two. So, it's, so I, I, I would challenge the notion of the term primarily, knowing that we're talking about two buildings. Two out of three are rentals. Okay. Yeah. 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 With rental property. With large rental property. Right. Okay. Let me clarify. Two out of three of the homes. Sure. Perfect. But there are four. And yeah. Three the, four. Right. Right. And it's very important to know because the different plan line uses, again, it right. informs the design. So it's yep. really known to know that these are two primarily rental uh, units. It means that yep. there is more traffic, there's more cars that are going down there than if it was just a single family. So Fair. things that have to be acknowledged. Yep. Uh, there. Um, as, as we move um, you know, along School Street, as we keep going west, um, the first uh, design that you know design change that we are proposing in this area is to move we've moved in this concept all the parking lots and you'll see that hmm. in most of the concept and the three concepts that we've tried to move away from having all our parking right in front of where the vets memorial is and the uh, town office entrances um it, and and move them to the side we've kept the same number in this concept and in all the concepts we've kept them between 16 and 17 spaces um but again the idea is to open up the the actual entrance to the town offices and make it a more formal entrance, which is what's being kind of shown here as a larger kind of, uh, I want to call it the gateway, but it's, it's just a larger space that identifies that this is the entrance to the, um, to the town offices. Um, there is, again, we haven't moved forward. We're looking at kind of form and very broad strokes. So there could be some changing in paving there. There could be some other ways to identify that that is kind of a, an important area. It also could serve as traffic calming because it narrows down the road there. Sure. Um, we could have some type of you know uh, elevated uh, traffic calming element right in between those two. Um, so the idea is that we emphasize the entrance to the uh, in this concept to the uh, to the town offices. Excuse One me. other yeah. Why? 
why emphasize the entrance to the town offices? Because yes. if we were thinking of um, design of public of public services, you want to be able to tell people where those public services are and that it is clear. I mean, if you come into the town hall, there's only one building that's the town hall. It looks like a school. I think it could have that signage, but mm -hmm. there's only one building. It's not like there's 10 buildings and we can't tell which one is the town hall. There's, there's only, I, I mean, I don't care if you do this, but I'm just saying, there's only one building. No, so, understandably so. I think because there are all the residential buildings around and other types of uses around. Houses. 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 Yeah. And then there's a building. Um, it, would, it would help to identify that as an institutional use and try to but kind of clearly identify that. And the other thing is that having, again, having vehicles right in front of an entrance is not the best way to emphasize an entrance to, to a, a town office. All right. Well, I guess when I look at that drawing, I would say that one thing that we have, we have a, a large multi-use municipal usage on that side of the street and the relationship between the library, the town offices, and the uh, Veterans Memorial, you know, quite deliberately is a little bit like a, kind of like a, a college quad. And, sort of, and I think that what Carlos is sort of saying is you lose that center access because it's, Right now, you're kind of distracted by the parking. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, that it's the only way to go, but that's how I move forward. Go ahead. In stopping people that speed on the road, I have found that a lot of people are very lost. And so, one way to show where the town hall is or show where the river walk is is to have more silence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a speed bump. Yeah. Yeah. Have a speed bump, please. A lot more for that, even if it's at the end of the street, that's going to acknowledge that those things are on that street. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I, I had a gentleman who said, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize that this was residential. Right. And um, I just don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for these things and I can't find them. So you just keep them and a sign to to slow down. And we'll yeah, and good. we've approached some of the signage kind of at the end because again we wanted to look at the kind of the big bones the big uh, design um, elements that we could add and then or change which ones of those are people are you know positive for and they want to uh, keep developing that and then at the end I talked a little bit about what details could go in which include signage planting and and uh, street lighting and other elements that could go in. But we're going to go through these three that are more about kind of the, the bigger uh, bigger elements in, in the streets. And again, to put an umbrella over the conversation, this is specific to an ADA grant. This is accessibility for people with disabilities to be able to get to municipal services. So again, we're not talking about scaping for the sake of scaping. That's, got it. So go I would say that having a sidewalk on the other side of the street wouldn't be necessary. Very well be. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great point. So this is the grant pay for the full project? The this is the design this round is. and then it would be an application for another grant round to see what happens. And these but, projects as you they're they are phased in projects for the most part. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of these larger design projects in smaller towns have to be kind of done in phases. Right. Um, because of how how what the budgets are. So uh, George? Yeah. No, when we're redesigning the street and stuff like that, are you guys going to think about drainage yes. and all that mm -hmm. stuff? Mm -hmm. Because that old clay tile that goes underground there now is settling as you can tell. Sure. And I just want to make sure that's going to be involved in it. I think after we finish with conceptual, we've acknowledged the drainage, and that's why I started talking about it, and I'll talk a little bit about, again, all their ideas and how they can be integrated into the green space that we're kind of adding here. Um, I think the engineering part of the project happens right after we finish with thinking of what we want to change in the street, and then at that point, the engineering details of drainage utilities uh, that are happening here uh, will get further uh, designed. Uh, but at this point, we would not be designing for those. We would definitely have some. Um, we take into consideration as we keep going. Um, one other uh, uh, advantage that we did, or that happens when what we found was that the uh, there's also the sidewalk. As we looked at the sidewalk, 
there is this uh, jog that happens, and we'll, you'll see in the three different concepts it's handled in different ways. Uh, and here, we, we, by having this kind of plaza or you know, entrance area that we show here, um, that jog, instead of having two jogs, one, there's one right now here, and the next one here. What I mean is that the sidewalk kind of changes direction abruptly. Hmm. Um, in this case, we've been able to keep that sidewalk totally straight all the way to where that uh, element or point uh, of where um, the two sidewalks join and then the sidewalk that goes to the, to the town offices and kind of the landmark. To, to, and then from that point, we change direction one more time as we keep moving uh, down. But we've taken one of the jaws, which I think design-wise is not the, the best. Um, as in what we've done again, we've uh, eliminated all the parking. We've basically uh, improved the parking that's already existing up to probably half, like right there and then added some more parking with some uh, islands, uh, mm -hmm. and then um, managed to uh, locate the poles that are right now kind of haphazardly in the middle of the parking in some of these islands so that, again, to create a little bit more order mm -hmm. in that area so there's no like pole right in the middle of the street. Do George? the islands have to be in there? Plowing. <coughs> because um, they're very, yeah. very You think of a plowing? Yeah. yeah. Um, we can... Yeah, I think we, that's, again, one of the subjects on that are... side would probably be all right, but the two in the middle, that, those things would be destroyed in a few years. Yeah. It's Fair. one of the issues that I yeah. have with design and trying to keep some green space and parking areas is having an island. So it might be that you have, you end up with the two end, end ones, but then we would need to figure out what we're doing with those so poles. poles. Uh, you know, they would take up one of those spaces anyway, because they're there. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't think we can move them further any any other place. And this is one area that is kind of unique, is because we have right of way, but then the property right next to the right of way is owned by the town. So part of that um, part of that parking lot right now is in the right of way. Part of it is in the library, you know, on that property of the right of way. The existing sidewalk there um, is actually not in the right of way. It's in the property next door. Um, so. Again, I don't know if we could, the post could not go into that other property, so they would have to stay on the right of way because that's what utility companies want, right. ask us to do. So if there were no items in the middle, there would ha have to be some type of, uh, basically a parking lot that would be taken by one of the posts. And we can move the post, but we still need to have certain, you know, there's limits of how far we can move each right. one of them. Ballpark is about 150 feet. So we've tried to, again, within those 150 feet, locate those posts so that they work with the design of these couple of concepts. 150 feet meaning span. Between the span, span of yeah. the two posts. Yeah. Um, they, I'm pretty sure we can't go beyond that. We can go less than that, but um, I've seen them between 100 and 150 feet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so changes as we keep moving uh, with the sidewalk now, that the existing sidewalk basically ends at the corner of the, of the um, library entrance and it doesn't keep going and this is the element that is uh, connecting now with an ADA sidewalk all the way down to the boat ramp and keeps going into the new trail uh, a couple of items that we need to again point out is that the right-of-way in this area is, is fairly uh, narrow so that's what you're seeing that the sidewalk is right on the edge of the road there and we have really very little area um, of the planting area there, um, because again, the right of way is much more narrower on that side and kind of broader on the opposite side. And we'll, we'll see that in a couple of more images as we keep going. Um, to make this connection, ADA connection, uh, there's a large, large stump right now that's on the corner. That's you know obviously a limiting factor for that crossing. So that would have to be dealt with if, for any of these three concepts to be able to make that access down to the uh, boat ramp. Uh, the other item that we need to, as I mentioned before, the north side is the side that it is really, it, you could build the sidewalk. The south side has all the drainage, so there's a large swale with uh, stone in there. So we couldn't really put another, a sidewalk on that opposite side. That said, this would require a retaining wall that would go from that point to the point where the new retaining wall that's existing that was newly built so that those two areas could be connected and there could be enough 
not the slope going down. I think we can manage that slope. It's the slope, the side slopes that are side there. slope, right? Because we have a you know a, a pretty steep uh, angle Got it. on the opposite side, pretty steep slope. So, so there would have to be some infrastructure there sure. in, the, in the shape of a retaining wall to be able to have that connection. Um, that's something that will repeat as as we keep going in some of these other concepts. I'm going to move to the, to the second one. Yep, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. It's a really quick question. Is there a reason that none of us residents were let know this was an ADA grant just purely for the fact that I would have loved to be welcome more informed? I do have a friend who works in the ADA ward in Northampton, and I would have loved to ask him for more things instead of coming in and just thinking they were just like designed to do everything here and knowing that it's ADA is like cuts out some of my things being like, oh, that, of course it doesn't make sense or that does make sense. I would sure. love to come in knowing that to come in with a more informed opinion and ideas? Is there a reason that wasn't included anywhere? Is this something that's not legally allowed to be said or just which was accidentally left off the emails of what kind of improvements it was meant to be? I think because we were looking at an old, and, and I'm gonna, I did not put together an email, but my, my assumption is that because we were looking at the overall design of the street, including ADA improvements. Right. And just to be frank, not to be frank, to be uh, in every project that we built, we have to we meet have to ADA. Oh, yes. yeah. The only section here that we are, it, I think goes above and beyond ADA, you know, we would be required to do here is that last connection that we have, you know, from here to here. Um, I mean, meaning, it's not that uh, it would be ideal to have that connection from that side. Um, there are other ways to get to that same walk, um, so it could be a great area, but for the most part, the rest of the sidewalk, having some type of drop-off or an area where you know somebody could be dropped off and then parkings that are ADA compliant, all these things would go in any design, um, street state design. But I understand what you're saying where you were, people were not clear that there was an ADA. Yeah, I, mean, I know it has to be ADA compliant, but I did not realize that ADA grant would have made me reach out to other people yeah. so it was more Got helpful it. For sure. questions overall. Yes. And, and again, the ADA aspect of this will be repeated in all the three concepts, meaning tr we're trying to bring people all the way from um, from Main Street all the way down to the program. So this is, again, another um, schematic concept. In this case, what we, uh, we're looking at, the, the strong elements that we're looking at here is changing. Instead of having the parallel parking that we were showing before right next to the library to eliminate some of the areas, the parking area right in front of the town building. What we've done is we've provided the same number of parking spaces but in a parallel way. Um, <laughs> as parallel parking. <laughs> and then there is, it, it still we have a, creating a strong element for the entrance of the actual uh, uh, town offices and creating kind of a gap in between those parking spaces so that there is a um, a clear way where you're going into the town offices. This also has, uh, we've conceptually shown another sidewalk on the opposite side, showing that it can it can be built within the right of way, there's space for it there. Um, weaving, uh, that's besides the, if, if people want that or not, just looking at the space, not looking at what, what the town really wants there. Yeah, so without going into houses or trees? Or, hey, hey, or leaving uh, eight in front yards? Would it be our responsibility hey, for like hey, five hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Time, out, time out, time out, time out, time out. One at a time. And if we could direct questions to the board, and we'll direct them to Carlos. So we don't start talking over each other. Even though I just did it, I have the authority to do that. <laughs> I promise I won't do it again. <laughs> I wouldn't make that. I well, so. I would, Tom says I shouldn't make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. So the, the right of ways are not meant to be, they're not your front yard. Your front yard is the line from, legally, just the line from the right of way all the way yeah. to the front of your house. That's what it's called, uh, front yard or, or house setback. Right. Um, so the idea of rights of way is to provide space for utilities and for other town necessities and utility necessities that happen within that area because you have to move, again, utilities, sidewalks, and other amenities that towns need or might require in some areas. That said, these, air, these houses have very narrow setbacks from, from the right of way, and we have, it's, a, it's a truth and I acknowledge that. And that that right of that small air, the small area that's left over right away becomes part of that front front yard for those uh, houses and residents that are living there. So definitely, we wanted to show what it would look like if we had a sidewalk on the opposite side. 
And the logic of that is that if this was because of the zoning and any of these lots eventually would become commercial because people wanted to change them to commercial, it would be advantageous to have also sidewalks that would come bring you in um, to the opposite side. And that said, again, none of these are set in stone. And some of the elements, for instance, the, the parallel parking in here can live without having the sidewalk on the opposite side. Um, and any of the improvements that we're seeing here can happen by themselves. There's some limits. As you can see here, we've, with this parallel parking, we can then have a sidewalk that's totally direct all the way through from um, Main Street, meeting the threshold or the new entrance, and then going all the way through, where before we had several jobs on the sidewalk that were not, there's, there was no real design why they were there. They were just incidental that there were jobs there because of the way the parking were or the utility pole was located. Yes? Lauren? Um, so just for reference, is any of the sidewalks shown on the north side there in the current location, like the library sidewalk, does that shift or is that? So in, the, in this concept, it would, need, it would shift okay. from where it is right now. Um, and again, because to bring that sidewalk to be all, all straight, uh, would need to be uh, moved closer to the road. So it's so it south. Yeah. 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 Sound. Okay. yeah, and I'm going to jump from the one before so you can see the difference clearly there. There's, that's where the existing sidewalk is right now, and this is where we're okay. Tom? Kirk, Carlos, um, yes. the, the uh, parallel parking that you talked about, mm -hmm. we've actually talked about that, about how that may be advantageous bef before. Mm -hmm. Um, because backing backing out into track, yeah. some vehicles are longer than the others, and it's always been yep. a mishmash of parking inside of there. Although I have never heard of a second anybody requiring a second sidewalk mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, uh, until you just talk. Unless we did change, uh, unless the houses did turn into commercial. Yep. That that I never thought about that, mm -hmm. but the just. On, on the parallel parking though, I I would like just to talk about that later on if possible Perfect. as well. So one of the advantages yeah. of parallel parking, as, as just mentioned, is that it's it, it's a safer way of parking for pedestrians and for a bike or for another vehicle that's going down because of the fact that you have to kind of look back as you're backing up and it gives you a little bit more hesitation time before you actually get into the road. Where somebody could go into a um, 90 degree or even an angle parking and yeah, just pull right out really look this way and then pull back immediately yeah. there's no pause between the movement of going and trying to get your car out right. so scientifically or engineering wise that it is uh, tends to be a safer type of parking than just backing off into the street go ahead. I totally agree with that um, my only concern for that would be where the corner store is located um, cars have illegally parked on that side of the road before, and actually, my my car was damaged from somebody mm -hmm. parking on that. On side. the north side, right. so on the on this right. side. Right, that's that I would not agree with. That's okay. not safe to have. Why well, right. delivery truck? Also, from somebody way. who's lived in Boston and multiple cities, and so if bikes aren't allowed on sidewalks, obviously <laughs> Ryan Street. So um, that, yes, you have people backing up. But let me tell you, from somebody who's been doored before, mm -hmm. the one thing people do not think of is they don't think about opening their door into yeah, the street. Fair. You have people riding their bikes down, especially little kids, yeah. not riding up, like riding on the street where mm -hmm. they're supposed to. People do just swing open their doors on a regular basis. There are multiple other things that can happen. I just want to put that out there because it's happened to me and happened to a good portion of my friends yeah. for different Great point. degrees of badness. <laughs> Tom? Yeah. Door mirrors and stitches, bad, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I, and I'm going to say, so in the streetscape engineering, basically we have three three ways of abandoning them. You've got 90 degree parking, you have angle parking, or four ways, and parallel parking. Um, the safest is actually reversed angle parking. Huh. So, mm -hmm. But that is basically, it's an angle parking that you go past the parking and then you back up in an angle. Because every time you go out, huh. I've never seen right. this being done successfully. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a great design. It, yeah. is, <laughs> it is the safest way to do it. It was actually implemented in downtown uh, Northampton for about a week. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and people got extremely right. confused right. Exactly. how that worked out, and it didn't work out. But acknowledging that that is the safest because then you yeah. don't get the door, and you have the person basically looking into the street as yeah. he's moving out. Fair. We got two hands up, Carlos. Yeah. One in the back. Lauren, I'll get you next. Oh, I was just going to say that I think in general that the 
parallel parking has a more residential mm -hmm. and town center character. Mm -hmm. And that may okay. be something that we want to consider. Uh, in, in, and again, in the, that's exactly one of the reasons why we proposed one of the concepts that have that. Um, and also in the traffic, traffic calming, I can bring also that, that road becomes fairly narrow. There are cars, there are cars parked parallel in this concept, um, if it doesn't change, shows them all the way through most of the area that's mostly visited. So it's that area of before you get to the library. So that also helps to slow down traffic. Um, the sense of a car coming out and a car is, it makes people slow down. In the back? I just want to make one other point. I mean, I think fixing the sidewalks so that they're accessible to everybody is, is really important. However, how many people walk on school street? Has anybody sat down and how many okay. pedestrians you have on school street on a given day? It's ministry. So before the town spends a lot of money putting in all these sidewalks, think about who's going to use them. Most people drive. Most people, no matter where they're coming from in town, they drive. They get in their car and they want a parking <coughs> space. Yeah. Um, very few people, other than the residents on School Street, walk up and down the street. So just just keep that in mind. It's not a busy pedestrian area. <coughs> and, and I, I understand. in the winter. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, Fair, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. One other thing, and just to, so it might not be happening now, um, having as many pedestrians, but we there's proposed improvements of, on crosswalks um, happening between one side of Main Street and the other side mm -hmm. of Main Street, and then there is a, a um, just by the camera, <laughs> just by the camera in this area. There's going to be a, a senior housing or proposed senior housing that could happen. Right. Um, we right. also improve the circle, yeah, creating basically a, a way for people to you know exercise themselves in the park by going around the loop, park loop. So. By creating these amenities, we envision that there will be more facility for people to actually walk here, and then providing them better sidewalks would be kind of the logical next step. Right. right. You're planning go for ahead. the future, Actually, essentially. In one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, like, <laughs> Sorry. He's pointing and shooting. Uh, ah. So with all that, excellent, fantastic. See so the crosswalks. It's great. What does any of that have to do with putting a crosswalk still? I mean, putting um, a sidewalk on our side of the street. There's still no parking on our side of the street. There's no businesses. Who here is on that side of School Street who lives there right now? Okay. I don't think yeah. any of us are going to be commercial yeah. anytime soon. Unless so, you guys have other plans. Yeah, I don't know. If not up to us. Well. But, <laughs> it's so, like, not up to us. So, yeah, so like that crosswalk over there, yeah. making this, the, the road slimmer, excellent. That's awesome. Like making it easier to get across the street. You're right. I've seen people get hit before going from like Blue Heron and across. Mm -hmm. It'd be yeah. great to actually that's, be able to see. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Widening and making a better sidewalk towards the side of the, where the town hall and the library is, all super awesome. I just still don't see an actual argument to put another mm -hmm. second sidewalk on our side. Uh, Liz and then Tom. I, what I was just going to throw out there is that the Graves Memorial Library building, the old building, is yeah. at the corner there. Mm -hmm. It's deeply underutilized now. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to create a situation where there's no parking around it. And so it looks oh, like yeah. you're eliminating some uh, on the west side of North Main Street, and it looks like you're eliminating some on the north side of School Street. So I would just want to caution, you know, you don't want to sort of box that building in to have no parking near it. So the, the current proposal that's out for the Main Street kind of improvements, that there is still parking in, in that area. It's just that they've, they've cleaned it out um, and they've changed the corner as, as this corner right here. Right. So there's still parking right in front of, of the- The same number? I don't know if the same number. And again, I think it's smaller. I think yeah. it is a little there's, smaller, you yeah. eliminate them on the north side of School Street, you've also eliminated one advantage here is actually we've actually added um, existing. There's no existing real parking on this side right now. Oh yes, there is. <laughs> but it's informal. It's informal. Right. 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 It's happening there. So we are not really. We will not be removing. And, and the only one that could be re that you could call that's removed is right at the end of. And we really don't want parking spaces that are less than 50. You know, more than. Less than 50 feet away from that intersection, so that somebody coming in and there's somebody coming out of that parking, there is some time Too for both dangerous. those vehicles to uh, make the decision. So you don't, I wouldn't have put a parking lot right up to the uh, sidewalk there because it would be 
it would be just too close to the intersection. Okay. Good point. Uh, but yeah. it's a good point, and I think, yes, it's eliminated some of the parking lots in there with the Main Street. I, I believe mm -hmm. that's what they're proposing. And in here, because we formalized the parking in that area, um, in this parallel parking, we might have maybe one less space than we would have if you just, you know, had the, what we have now where people just park there. Great. Tom and then Lauren. I would I would just add I I actually there's one thing I like about that I don't like the second sidewalk I, I think one one's fine um, but by narrowing down that that mouth that yeah. mouth yep. right there I think all of us that have to go and take a left out of there and head north yep. that is a very because you got cars sometimes I've seen actually three cars side by side coming at me and and then but but you have to poke your nose out far enough and but just you when you're see. assuming yeah. that there's no one yeah. one of those three aren't coming at you then you have to worry about the cars that are taking the right that they now have to stop on a red um to head north so i always thought that that was a, a very um concerning intersection mm -hmm. that's that goes yeah. yeah i always thought no, the the other thing um, Kathy about the comment about the, the number of people a very interesting thing now when you buy real estate um, when you look at one of the listings it's called the walkability of a neighborhood and walkabilities of neighborhoods are, are becoming a much bigger um, selling point in, in bringing people into a community mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I think and again, I don't. I, I personally don't think we need the second sidewalk, but increasing our walkability um, in, in this area and actually along North and South Main Street, we've been talking about for 40 years about, or probably longer, about how to build a, a village center or a town center. We need people to walk in it, and I and I think those are ways that we start that we're starting to bring people in. I, I work at the university, and it's amazing. I, Sarah, I see you back there. People are coming up to me now and saying, hey, we walk on your river park, your, your parkway. I don't know who these people are, <laughs> um, but they're talking about walking. He says, can you, make, can you make that longer? Because it's a great, it's a great walk. And I'm, and I'm going, hey, who the heck are you? But, but thank you. And, and sure. it, the, the thing goes to the park, you know, our, our people, the, our, our people, our, our community pathways community that came up with those ideas. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, I think maybe we don't need the two walk sidewalk, but maybe adding that sidewalk is a, or better sidewalk is, is advantageous to That's us. Good. Lauren? Um, so I mean, in general, I actually like the parallel parking. I agree we need some parking down there, the grade, but I kind of like the way it extends the whole length of the um, I kind of agree that adding the set the south um, sidewalk since we don't have room to have green space towards mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. I, I really think every sidewalk we have where the sidewalk is on the road is really not a very good walking Fair. Yeah. Um, so Too close to the road. No the property is turning commercial. I'm not really sure what the advantage is because I don't. I think it will be more <coughs> pleasant to walk on the other side. Fair. Um, in okay, in Carlos, we had one more question here. Okay. I'm bringing it back to walkability. Okay. We don't have a lot of amenities like grocery stores or convenience stores or anything like mm -hmm. that. So walkability is almost like a non-issue because there's no reason for you to walk to the grocery store. You have to drive 15 minutes to get there and what you're talking about, Millstone. But there's no Walgreens, no CVS, no sort of like amenities for like things that you need to live. And that is a lot of what walkability applies to. Sure. So I don't know if that's really a necessary uh, bolster or argument to this aspect of this this particular design. Go ahead. I moved here precisely because I could walk to everything I needed. I needed. Okay. Right. Not everything. The CVS I have to get on a bus, but I can walk to the bus. <laughs> and get on a bus and go to everything. And it's the number one reason that I not only moved here, but stayed here, 
was for the community that that creates. You talk to people, you walk by people, you <coughs> create community by having sidewalks that are accessible to everybody. Mm. And I think what you're doing is fantastic in that regard. You're supporting what was started by Sarah with the River Walk. That is going to be a popular destination. People are going to want to walk there. Yes, they may <coughs> drive here by car, and they may have to walk from where they park their car <coughs> to get along to this river walk that is so attractive. Mm -hmm. So please continue with this. Okay. One sidewalk is probably enough. I love the way that looks uh, from, the, from the overview, but I think I would also love the way it feels mm -hmm. as you walk down School Street. I think that's terribly important. Mm -hmm. I think why we love those walks on the, um, on Main Street is because they look and feel right. Mm -hmm. And I think what Carlos is trying to do is to incorporate that feel as well as the utility into this part of the town, sure. which is this part of the town. Fair. Okay. Deep breath. When <laughs> 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 I stand up. Okay. Stand up? Yeah. okay. I agree with everything you said. I love the fact that there's a sidewalk out there. I love walking with my kids. But I will tell you how my street has changed. There are people speeding on my road consistently. My dog is on medication because she cannot stand the people walking back and forth. This is a residential community. If you want to expand, expand on Main Street. I agree that we need some walkway there. Sure. That is a dangerous intersection. My kids' bus stop, both of my kids, their bus stop is right here. That is extremely dangerous. Yep. I cannot let them cross the street by themselves. Sure. They have to wait for me. But I do not agree with wrecking residents, residential area, okay? I moved to this town because it was quiet. Because I was able to take my kids outside and let them ride their bikes. I cannot do that any longer, okay? There is graffiti under the bridge. Nazi symbols that were just removed. There is trash and litter. Okay, I do not agree with anything. And I don't know what the outcome will be. Sure. What is the outcome? The best part is we're talking about concepts right now. Right. Okay. This is all. So. But I want to know the end result. Well, we're I not. We haven't know there yet. I'm we're, yeah, to this is. I saw my home. We're not even close yeah, to this. This is all result. just part of the, the process. Contrary. And, and I think, well, if I could just interject Please too, say. one of the things, obviously, we're trying to accommodate for all sorts of safety situations but no design can deal with your personal responsibility as an individual too so that's still it's still a factor in that can i just add one thing sure. there needs to be more police involvement on that street he's right there okay. as a matter of fact he's standing in the door because in the public <laughs> library we yeah. now have squatters people living out of the cars Go ahead. I'd just like to add to that last point. Uh, you know, the two gentlemen have been living in that van for a better part of two weeks now. Over the weekend, I uh, actually had a confrontation with they. They confronted me. Uh, I have a video if you'd like to see it of them uh, swearing at me, giving me the finger, and throwing a coffee cup in my yard. Um, they're in and out all night, all day. Um, and, you know, I, I, an officer was nice enough to, to finally come out last evening, you know, and. Mm. Uh, try to address it. They were already gone. Uh, but I'll tell you what, my girlfriend walks the dog over there and she doesn't feel comfortable now. There's little kids in and out of there all the time. Mm -hmm. You got two guys living in a van, you know, whatever their circumstances may be, that's none of my business, but it's an uncomfortable feeling, especially in this day and age. That's all I want to have Fair. to have. Fair. And I'm glad Chief mm -hmm. is here to hear. I'm glad the Chief is here to hear that as well. Sidewalks. Yes, sidewalks. Yeah, sidewalks. Uh, so, so, back to <laughs> that. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, you know, and I want to say, I mean, I know for some people it might be uncomfortable or not comfortable, but, mm -hmm. you know, this is great. Getting feedback. Sorry. No, or, no, no, no. Getting feedback. And one of the main things that we've talked about when we were in committee, you know, we're getting things together so that then we can show it to the public is that the important thing is the neighbors who are here and their voices have to be part of this design process because if not design doesn't work when the people who are there they right. mm -hmm. don't, don't use it or don't agree with it you know you can put the best design 
in a place, but if people are not being integrated into that process, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work. So again, okay. I appreciate you, all you guys coming out uh, today and guys going out, coming out today for us and, and, and looking at all this. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no issue. I mean, again, this is, can you tell? Yeah, I, I, well, there's you know, a I, lot of issues, not just the, yeah. what's the design, yeah. because yeah. there's, yeah, Clearly, and, some other. Well, these yeah. other things are part of things that I, for instance, you know, the mm -hmm. the, the issue with uh, some of the living of the cuts, things that I didn't know about. Now I know about. It. Everybody knows right. it because it's being on the TV now, and it's something <laughs> that people will be, you know, acknowledging and, and paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So, so I think it's you know it's important to bring those things out. Sure. Well, and speed has been a problem all around town because there's been a lot of complaints, yeah. not just on School Street, but there's a lot of complaints about people speeding. And oftentimes it turns out to be the people who live in that area. So we all have to be a little careful with our speed, I think. So if I could, along the yeah. vehicle traffic, mm -hmm. everybody's abiding by the rules. Mm -hmm. Parallel, right? My, yes. my, nose, my, my nose of my vehicle, my van, is parked right by the library. I have to drive into the library parking lot to turn around mm -hmm. and then head yeah. back east on that, that's School the Street, right? negative part of the parallel park. Right. Is that it just, is just trying to turn you, turn you're, you're, UE and the way that if you were in 90 degrees, you can just right. back up right. and then basically yeah, that's that's the space. Got it. So again, there's positives and negatives in yeah. all these I, concepts I, and ideas. So. I'm going to put that out there. Lauren? So I was going to ask about that before, but I would say that if we were all doing what we were supposed to do, when we backed out of the spots we have now, we would go down to the library parking lot and Correct. turn around. Not just that. So the, yeah. really that's true. so the pattern doesn't change. It's the kind of like interaction with the vehicle and pedestrians, which we hope are on the sidewalk. And I mean, it's interesting to hear about some of these other issues on mm -hmm. the school street. Um, it, but in terms of just speed and safety, it seems to me that just the narrowing of the road and possibly yep. having that would help a lot. I would, think. would actually help that part. I, mean, I see that there are other issues. Good point. And they have to be. Can we put in speed bumps on the street? Yeah, and in, in all these concepts, when you get to this area of the road, we're showing some type of speed bump oh, or table yeah. or some way to reduce the speed. In this case, it's very, very easy for me to have that kind of connection because what we were proposing here is from one side to the sidewalk across, but that's going to be elevated. But in any of the three, the other two concepts that you'll see that don't have the sidewalk. We could have something there. George, why don't we want speed bumps? There? I was, I was just going to disagree. I was, yeah, I was waiting to hear that. I, I understand. They, they are so hard to plow over. I understand. The, the tip of the plow catches them, rips them out. We uh, had some at the school and ended up being out in yeah. the middle of the winter. So. Is a table better for plowing? Is a table better than a bump yeah. for plowing? Then, Where it goes just like, you know, kind of like they have an Amherst? It could be. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit more gradual. No. Uh, even the, um, I know the center is south of Hadley, you're taking 47 and you're going into Hadley. Mm -hmm. There's that little town mm -hmm. in between, which is adorable, and mm -hmm. they have just the light up signs that said, like, your speed is oh, this. Oh, North Hadley, Hadley Village. Is, yeah. Everybody actually follows the speed limit there. Could we just do that even if you're not even monitoring sure. speed? Just, like, sure. pop one up just to make people have to, like, we, acknowledge the We are looking at that as part of the it's South okay, Main that Street way, thing. That so that's a number of and right. maybe make people just kind of like the um, one in uh, Sugarloaf Street on Deerfield that actually happens and I think that one works even better because of the little smiley face it tends to yeah. hit with people's uh, emojis yeah. 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 do you know what I mean it's like oh hey yeah go ahead oh, okay. exactly oh, they're like the one because everybody would be complaining about the noise now yeah, so, yeah, there's, 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 there's two sides when you're actually driving. That's one thing. When you live near them, they're loud. So, I appreciate that, but it's a good, good suggestion. There's, and with the speed tables, and, and you, if you've seen the speed tables that are average, which are much more, you know, probably much Aggressive. more than what you would have here, the, the right. ones that are right. between Amherst College and, and uh, Pleasant Street. But you'll see that what, they, what we, we designed those and what we did for, because there's, a heavy plowing that goes on there and you reinforce the edges, obviously this increases the cost of it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just putting some asphalt yep. and, and leaving it there, um, but you can reinforce the edges either by using granite or you can use um, other concrete and you can mm -hmm. reinforce that edge so mm -hmm. that there is some um, protection for that speed bump. Um, okay. But I think 
I'm going to move to the next one. Yeah. Um, so we. I was going to give you the 20 minute yeah. window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I, and, um, other um, things to do. Carlos, you have eight plans, right? I, I, I would be. <laughs> no, no way. Oh. But the, no, that's the important part. The only last things that I want to show, you know, show here basically the same connection that we're doing. One of the, because of the parallel parking, we brought that sidewalk closer to the road in this area, protected still by the parallel parking, so it's not straight on the road. And that way we can keep a straight line that's within the right of way and we keep going and we don't have another jog like we had before that we have to kind of handle this whole kind of changing in direction as you get to the library. Yes. Before go you go to concept three, uh, yep. if you were to put a sidewalk on the south, the, by the residential houses, is that south? Yeah. Um, it looks like it's going through some trees. Are you taking trees out in any of these so concepts? So I, there, I believe the only there might be one tree, and I think it's this. In, and I, 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 we need. I would need to look at the survey again and see where that is. Um, there, the intention is not to try not to to remove okay. these trees. Um, there are ways to deal with them. Again, it is every time you have you have to deal with roots and trees. It's it's more expensive than if you didn't have them there. And I just want to point out before I move here. Again, having that second sidewalk was in relationship to knowing that there is a, a town center district there and looking way in the future if there were changes there. We wanted to throw it out there to get some comments back and see what people are, are thinking of it. And I think we've gotten a lot of good comments. <laughs> so just wanted to point that out. So our, this is kind of the last uh, concept we've done here. What we are showing here is that there was, again, the, um, as I began the project, there was an objective of trying to deal with the power lines. And when we, you know, the first one was trying to approach to put those power lines on the ground. I think this feasibly, I think that's not feasible because of the enormous cost of it. You but what we were looking at here was what happens if I bring some of that uh, those poles. Right now there are nine poles in total, I believe, three at the end that are already on the south side, and then there are six that are in the north side right now, on the side of the um, town offices and, and whatnot. So in this one, what we've done is we've kept the power lines on the uh, south side, giving a little bit more room within that area, so added another three feet of space between for what is the right of way now. So basically the right of way in this one, incre uh, the uh, green space in the right of way, as okay. you'll see from there, increases so that we can yeah. accommodate those posts yeah. and have some space because we, don't, we didn't want to get them uh, extremely close to the houses. Right? And we wanted to make sure that we had enough space. There is this three foot um, setback that you need for posts so that when cars are driving through here and if somebody wants to park and open the door, he's not hitting the post. And that was also taken into consideration very early, but thinking of any of the entrances having posts that are far away enough for each one of those curb cuts so that you're, if you stop to grab your uh, mail and you want to open the door, you're not, you don't have a post right on top of it. So Carlos, if I could, mm -hmm. this, this concept here has utilities on the south side now, exactly. and the north side is the focus of the sidewalk, Yes. and by moving the utilities to the south side, this is the overhead utilities, in the public way, the yards on mm -hmm. the south side grow a little north? It grows a little bit north, about three feet to four feet, depending on the area. The idea, again, so we're not taking any of that green space. We're kind of adding a little bit of green space. Right. That's where the poles would go. Got it. So and, and we'll see, we'll I have one some more. nice 3D images of why, what is the difference, you know, having the post on one side on the other. And it's to open up the view onto the right side where the, those, um, the municipal buildings are kind of cleaning up that old uh, north edge. So the, if I could, Carlos, one follow-up mm -hmm. question. The right now, the utilities on either side of the street serve both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. exactly. So we cross over. Mm -hmm. are you, is, is the concept going to include the overhead requirements to feed the library, the town office building? So the, right now, there is underground or, utilities. Or, or, or the other way. Yeah. Well, so a, right there's now, a there pole at, the, pole the, there's a post right here, yeah. and basically all the utilities go then down underground and get fed Correct. to the town office and the library and everything else. Understood. So in theory, we could have the post on so you this side you and then go underground. The extend the utilities under the ground. Under the Understood. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, you had your hand up. Uh, 
Which one of those? And both of you. Probably have the same I, thing. I just, um, <laughs> these aren't exactly where the utility poles would be, correct? I mean, no, we have, yeah. we still are so far early on but this. The, the and, utility uh, poles be closer to our houses. Yes, they will be on the, what this shows is that they will be definitely on the south. I just see one in my second driveway, that's all. Okay, so that's, that's, right. yeah, right. that's something that would yeah. be definitely yeah. correct. And, okay. And, you know, driveways and, you know, we, I work off of a survey that was done here, so some of those curb cuts, if there is another driveway there, it might not be in pink up, so that's not a very point. useful yeah. driveway. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, but a fair point, what happens to the poles? What's For the span? Sure. Right. So, in, and again, we have, now we've, we've eliminated uh, the parking spaces that we had shown in parallel. Mm. We have included all those parking spaces right next to the library. Go ahead. Is that because so the the change to not having like could you do parallels still? In you could, we could still do par we could still do parallel. Mm -hmm. We would have to probably move the sidewalk as far as we can go it to uh, to get it to the right of way. Mm -hmm. And it might be that I cannot have a lot more green space on the on the south side. Mm -hmm. So part of why you went back to this is because the green space shifted yeah. from uh, yeah. north to south a yeah. little bit for the bolts. There's a limited amount, you know, one thing that it's like, it's like, you know, house economics, you have a certain amount yeah. of pie. Right. I have a certain amount of width <laughs> between one side and the other, and in this case it's 50 feet. Yeah. It's 50 feet right away. So if I take from one side or yeah. opposed to the other, things have to balance out. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Um, one of the you know observations of this is that um, again three of these poles are uh, it, or two or three of them are still already on the south side so they're feeding and they're going over um, overhead to feed the north side as you go after the uh, library building mm -hmm. so again it, it would change some of them but it would be, uh, would be not all of them ballpark numbers from the utility companies we're looking at it's not as much as millions of dollars, but it's still a significant sure. investment to do this. So we're looking between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars to actually right. move posts oh, around sure. because you have uh, uh, transformers and, and all these posts that are at the post. So all this, all these infrastructure has to be taken uh, in, into account. There are some instances where the power companies can run with some of these costs, but but there is going to be a cost uh, involved with uh, moving the posts to the opposite side. Yeah. And at the early stage, we're, we're sold. Again, if, if that's something that we want to cover, we would then yep. follow up with the uh, utility companies. Liz? Yes. I just wondered how many millions is it to put it underground? So they were giving me numbers. They had actually a proposal that had come in from South Deerfield, which was kind of advantageous for us because it happened uh, months before I called. So they had a pretty, a pretty significant, well, a pretty good number of what would happen in a town like ours. Um, they're talking about maybe five to ten thousand dollars a linear foot. So you're talking about you know four million dollars uh, for this the length of the of the whole road. And in, in addition to that is, and he was giving me a very ballpark number because he hasn't looked at all those transformers that are on the post would need to become transformers on the ground. Yeah, like the, the so you are buying many transformers that you wouldn't need to buy if, the, if they stay on the poles. All the private connections would need to be redone, and they would all need to be on the ground right now. Those are our area. Right. So, it just as when they give you this big number, immediately you think why. But then, as they keep explaining, um, also all your data and fiber optics would have to be on the ground, so you have to deal with that. And so, it is a very expensive endeavor, a very labor-intensive endeavor. And regardless of what gets underground on School Street, near the end it pops back up so it can cross the river. So the only thing so you that can, you can, we, can, we can take care of it to... Go under the river, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's just go for it. So what, what, <laughs> just to clarify that, because I thought that that's how it went, but the reality is that those the power lines that are here, they cross the street. The and, express circuit, yeah. And then they come back here. Yep. And then they come back to Main Street, mm -hmm. and then they feed all the way to the end, and that oh, so it's a dead is, end. Is a dead end. Oh, okay. So fair. Five million. Let's do that's, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, right. Obviously, when we were when I was looking at that, I wanted to because that would even make it even more complicated. Sure. Even moving posts at that point would be more much more complicated because yeah, you're bringing in a, you know, high voltage lines yeah. basically coming from one side to the other. So. But that's, again, to me it was also a surprise. I thought that we were feeding off of that line that crosses and yep. it was right there. So it's a, it's a so T it's a dead end. Perfect. 
Um, so this is the 10 minute warning, just like I used to give to my kids. It's like you have a 10 minute warning right now. So I'm going to go through so that I can the visuals. Uh, if I could, Rob. Rob. Um, one comment about moving the wires. If you live on the south side, I think it's counterintuitive, but you might want to take a look at when you're going out your drive or you're walking out to look at the jumble of wires across the street, which you now won't see if you live on the south side and you're driving out because they're over your head. And the other mm -hmm. thing, the jumble of wires, half of it is across the street from the north to yeah. the south. Right, Feeding buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting point. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Rock. Go so, ahead, Carlos. And 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 in here, what I what we did was again just to get uh, better visuals of what we've been talking about in these concepts. As we put this, the existing conditions, which is what you're seeing here, and then um, all the proposed conditions into 3D, and we are compare. We're going to be comparing section by section. We're going to go really quickly here because you've seen and we've talked about plenty of what's going on, but it's just to have a stronger visual. So this is existing conditions. This is the narrowing of that street. Uh, changes to the parking lot. So the parking is still down in front of the town office building toward the library. This is not the parallel. Yeah, this is Got the it. first one. And then yep. we'll see, this is what parallel parking would be. Mm -hmm. With having both sidewalks on, on either side. Mm -hmm. And then we look at what happens to the <coughs> power lines to the left side, Got or it. the south side, compared to the right side. Back between two and three. Please. Yes, this is two, and that will be three. Is that, hmm. is that just accidental, the parking in front of the graves jumped in there? Parking in where? So you see the green uh, space uh, in the yeah, bottom right? Lower right. Right? And it, uh, that, that might have been just the, uh, yeah, uh, typo in that. <laughs> Um, meaning, typo. Yeah, it might have been a three D typo. Yeah. Um, so that area is green. This is not again. I just want to point out. This is taken from the, the conceptuals for the main street. Um, but for the most part, and I will for next time, I will definitely uh, double check that on mm -hmm. what that green is. I believe that there is green space on the right, mm -hmm. and that that one is just it did not get in there. That yep. green area. Is so it hand up? Um, so just really quickly, if move the utility poles across the street because there's been some good points. Are there still lights on those utility poles across the street? Because so we already had an issue with the one directly across the street when it was first turned on. It was shining directly yep. into our bedroom. The way all of our houses are set up, basically all of our bedrooms on this whole street are, are at the street. There's nowhere else to put them. Yeah. They're just all right there. So I think the light pollution is our one of our Big point. concerns. Yes. So there would be what we are, and this is again conceptually. If I'm doing streetscape and I'm improving the sidewalk and I'm improving all the all the way through, we've shown also pedestrian lighting on, on the north side, yep. which yep. is going to be helping to light light and not just light because normally, so road lights, they're at less intensity but really broad. Right. Um, when you look at these pedestrian lights, they're going to be a little bit more intense, but they're very focused and very straight low, down, so that you can keep the light Full very light. controlled. So there would not be ones. On well, I mean, I believe I'm pretty sure that they would still probably be some in here. Uh, um, yeah. And that is but, and that is a question of when we do because we will do photometric. Mm -hmm. You know, when you propose lighting like this, you provide a map that shows where the light lands. Right. Right. So, so you could design it so that it's not so in your bedroom. If we could, if yeah. um, in, so, depending on the amount of light that is actually going to be happening with this pedestrian lighting that we're showing for the parking, I know it's going to be probably sufficient. Right. Uh, for the road, there is light limits that you want to have some light. Uh, the other, and we talked about, I mentioned this uh, uh, at some of the first meeting that we had, is that some of the street lights, the other <coughs> lights, as somebody I think shouted out. Um, those can be um, directed mm -hmm. right. very well compared to old style that, yeah. lighting. I was also, you have physical uh, uh, block. You know, you can block the back of some of these lights so that you don't right. have as much of a glare coming in. But I it is an issue. I was going to weigh in if I could. The town has gone through an LED street lighting upgrade, and an area of importance for the board of selectmen was its profile at grade level mm -hmm. and if people have driven around in the last 
five months, they'll notice that the streetscapes of the town look very, very different than what they did with the old uh, high pressure sodium fixtures. The fixtures currently in place are cropped off. It's a much neater look, and the board was particularly active. Well, we were particularly stubborn about making sure we got the fixtures that looked right. Anyway, long story and short. You have to have one, the one across no, the street. Yeah, yeah, yours was the only one. Of course it was the only one. I'm sure it was like, here, Actually, it was. No, it was fixed immediately. Yeah, it was off. Great. So, so uh, Lauren, Lauren actually had her hand up at one yes. point. So, in any of these scenarios, with the narrowing of the street, the parking lot from the corner store gets deeper. I mean, they wind up with more space. Can we work with them to deal with the whole delivery situation so that it doesn't impact the traffic and safety and maybe allow some parking over on the other side of the street? Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think when we, and at, at this early moment, we, we I haven't uh, come directly with the corner store and started looking into that. Even with the second sidewalk concept, yeah. if we were wanting to follow that, there would need to be a lot of resolution of the design right there. Yeah because their parking goes all the way to the building and then you have the right-of-way kind of isolated by itself. Great. Where normally you would have a sidewalk closer to the building and then the parking off of that sidewalk. Great point, Lauren. It's like they're benefiting by basically using the right-of-way for parking. Correct. It could be at least impact how that parking is used. Great point. Good point. We captured that piece. I'm giving everybody the five-minute warning now, just again. And I'm going to go quickly because uh, there is so we're going to go in the in the areas that we we looked at before so existing conditions right now and right in the area right in front of the town hall i this line that we've shown here it's it's obviously not there there's some line striping on the parking but mm -hmm. one of the things that happens is that the road kind of widens visually in this area because yeah. it just the pavement just keeps going so we'll see that's the difference uh, we're talking about if we with the concept of the post on the right side um, no second sidewalk. This is what happens. Like I said, we we to accommodate for the sidewalk and also in the in the concept with the post, we've moved the right of way is slightly notched to the road, to the north side. Mm -hmm. And then we we have kind of where we have all the posts right on the left, and then the, uh, all the green space right on the front of it. So Carlos, one of, if I could, one of the one of one the, the four, this is the parallel parking. Parallel parking. Okay, thank yeah. you. This is where you have parallel parking. Parallel, Got it. parallel parking would start right after, you know, this this last post, and this is uh, the the new entrance. Got it. So that's and that would be a, a kind of our you, last concept. Utility on the south. On the south side. I'm going to go quickly with these the next couple because this is I think we're looking at this you know similar areas that we've looked at before and mm -hmm. it's just the same improvements. This is the area where that you know post is kind of floating, and we've moved the post in some of these so that we can have an island. And you see what we were talking about the other post in the second island. So the white wall on the right. This is our library. Okay. Got it. Yeah, and unfortunately, I would love to have model everybody's no, house to no. the details. Yeah. They, <laughs> no. Well, they're ma it's a massing concept. The idea is that you have a sense of those limits, special limits that you have on the sides. Well played. Then this is the one with the parallel parking. Mm -hmm. So you keep moving, and then you know this kind of more formalized entrance with some type of speed. In all those designs, the narrowing of the road really does tighten up. The street, and, and hopefully that alone will help a lot with speeding. Right. I think you know the two things narrowing down definitely is one of those. And now I yeah. think if the, if this threshold, if, if there was some type of mm -hmm. you know either a traffic table or speed bump or whatever, mm -hmm. if you could slow down people at that point, I think that would then kind of split the road, yeah. the school street into two, and mm -hmm. it, it would make people to stop and then right. start going again. Yeah, it sets the tone, if you will. Do you tend to get more people speeding down the street this way or off of the street, uh, you know, just out of curiosity? Ways. They both usually ways. have boats attached to them, and it's kind of both, okay. it's both depending on what time of the day. I mean, my dog's been hit by by somebody speeding. Mm -hmm. So they go okay. really fast. She's not exactly right out early. of the library, mm -hmm. left marks and everything. My neighbor tried to stop them, and uh, they were like, "Can I hmm. your door?" Hmm. Yes, you did. Right. In the last okay. couple of minutes, I wanted to make sure that we went. This is the end, kind of the end of the road, and that stays very similar in, in, in effect, except for the sidewalk that we were adding here. But the width of the road stays very similar. 
to what it is. Those posts are the existing posts that are on the left side mm -hmm. or the south side and at the end of the road. Um, this is, again, the concept where we would have the two sidewalks and then our and, last concept. Um, and that's, that's we the have that. Th this one is the one that has all the utility posts on the left. You mm -hmm. see the yeah. last post is all of a sudden here, so now here. Mm -hmm. But the, the next two or three are, are, are already existing there. And the, the last one's here is just how, you know, what the treatment is. I, you know, this is misleading in the sense this slopes significantly down at about 6% all the way down. Yep. And for just uh, speed purposes of preparing these models, we, you know, we uh, to do this looked way. at the slopes, but the model is showing it flat. Because we were really looking at the street and what happens in the street. This is, you know, if we had the two sidewalks, and if we had just one sidewalk, and obviously in any of these, you would need to have some amount of crosswalk right at the end because we're bringing all the sidewalk on, on the north side and there has to be some way of changing directions to go down. One couple of other items I wanted to show just at the end is, you know, this is using one of the first the first concepts of that's the existing, but if, if you know, when I say existing, this is just the concept itself, not the existing conditions, but the first concept that we saw that has change parking and the utilities on the right side. This is what um, the uh, Trails and, and, and uh, Pathways Committee have oh. been going through a design of some signage for uh, showing where uh, some of the, the, the offices are and kind of uh, identifying the uses in, in, the, in School Street. So we're showing one example here where we're showing where what it would look like to have those um, kind of signs uh, yeah. at the post. Banners, yeah. Yeah. We, those could go also on the pedestrian lighting, so depending on how, where you want to emphasize, yeah. pedestrian lighting comes with these brackets that you can use for that. Um, but I wanted to show, this is another uh, two, the last two, we're showing some smaller trees that could be planted here, again, just to show, and then what it would look if we had some, um, <coughs> some other types of plantings, lower plantings happening on that green strip. Um, and this is what we were talking about. These are the signs that are, th that again, conceptually, we started thinking of how to create some signage that makes everything uh, cohesive and clear. And then th th on the top here, you're seeing some shrubs, you know, planted in that area, and the planting area. And there, here is a combination. It could be some shrubs and some trees, depending on the area. Again, I wanted to throw the ideas out there. If you ask me personally, I think if we were to do trees on that side, it would need to be very specific where we plant them. I mean, probably farther down on the street <coughs> or into that library, near parking and the, mm -hmm. next to the library might be a good place to have those. But we don't want to create the same issue that we've had with blocking the entrance, you know, visually. Um, but I wanted to make sure that people understood that these green spaces, these green strips are going to serve either for Either some types of plantings, it might be for uh, signage, um, it could be for having some benches that bump out of the sidewalk in those areas for people to stop and rest. Um, there are many uses that could be used with those islands. And the last thing I wanted to emphasize <coughs> is that that area could end up being uh, our drainage areas too. So okay. if we yeah. had issues, if, like we heard there are issues with existing storm drainage, we have catch basins along the street. Mm -hmm. um, the movement that's been happening lately is to try to deal with that stormwater on site instead of trying to put it in a pipe and send it somewhere else. So this provides some opportunity of having vegetated soil. So yeah. the soils here, as we saw in the park, are extremely good for infiltrating. Mm -hmm. So it could be a place where you could start yeah. infiltrating some of that water before it hits the cache basin. Yeah. So uh, possibilities, again, by changing the streetscape, it opens mm -hmm. up the possibilities of changing utilities, changing plantings. Mm -hmm and kind of the use of the of that area um, in the future. Okay. That's the end of the presentation. So, so just one second. You're first. So do all of these uh, proposals have the same budget? And who is paying for each of these? At this very early part of cost concept, Depression. the only budgets that I looked at were about the utilities because I knew that that would be uh, make or break. I knew that Thank putting you. utilities on the ground is a very big uh, expense. So we, I looked at those first. As we keep moving and people give us some more feedback and we start narrowing down these concepts, I think that's the point where we start putting some numbers uh, to those. Tom? Um, okay. Sorry. 
how do uh, the other question I, I think I could leave to the town to answer in mm -hmm. regards to funding. How do we go about that, right? I have my question was next steps, but you're next. So, A, thank, thank you for the conversation tonight, but I am disappointed. I'm disappointed when I heard that your families don't feel safe. I have something to tell all of you. If that is a consideration, you need to let us know, okay? Because there's little things that we can do, such as maybe we just put a sign up, we, we pass a town bylaw that restricts, that says no, there's no uh, parking in uh, municipal parking lots after 10 o'clock at night. That gives a police department a, a method of enforcing it so it takes away those concerns that you have. But we, we can't do it unless we know there's a concern. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said what you said tonight. But at the same time, I'm disappointed that, that you didn't call um, the, town, the, town, the selectman's office or the town administrator, or when you see one of us, stop us on the street. Because it matters. And, and I, I don't think it's really, and, so, and sometimes, you know, this, this right, right hand turn, no right hand turns on red, a lot of people are concerned about it, but I'll tell you, if, if your child had been hit on that, on, that, uh, on that corner, or you were a bicycle rider and your child had been hit, that's a concern to you. And as soon as, soon as that, the state looked at the, the number of accidents that happened there and, and near misses, how many people would have thought that the state would have acted in less than a week? <laughs> Who's ever heard of that? <laughs> But, but it was a concern, and it was an oversight on, on their part on not looking at, at the numbers. So I, I guess what I'm saying is that if you have a concern, you, you, need, you need to let, at least allow us a chance to help. Because we may know the right people, or we may, we may find a technique to be able to have. And that's what the good thing about talking to Carlos, Carlos the Street Designs, in my experiences, we probably, we're gonna throw them all out and if we do do something, it's going to probably be some kind of, and, and Carlos knows this. I, I mean, and he's a professional, but he does, this happens some all the time. We'll probably throw them all out and we'll probably use bits and pieces of all those designs and come up with something that you guys and the whole town can be proud of. But we okay. can't do it without, I guess basically we can't do it without your help. Without your help. And if you have a concern, you need to let us know. Thank you, Scott. Go ahead. Um, to address that issue a little bit, the, there was a time when the library heard that there were people sitting outside the library because we had the great Wi Fi. Right. And so we have addressed that and we've mm -hmm. turned the wireless off. So mm -hmm. whoever's sitting there is not using the library wireless anymore. Fair point. So that's one thing we could do, but we had to hear, hear from them. Yeah. Fair points. Fair points. So next steps for us, right? We've got concepts. We get feedback. I got really good feedback. Right? And, and <laughs> definitely definitely got feedback. Really, this is, so this don't is feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Screen shout. Do it however you no. want to do it. I'm used to it. I've been doing this for 12, 13 years now. I've done public hearings, public presentations, and and it's part of how you know different people communicate in different sure. ways, and we need to get that feedback. <laughs> The worst that I've had is when I go and have one of these projects, only two people show up, they go like, yeah, sure. They can build this, start getting the grants, right. and then people start screaming at people right. when we could have fixed it at the beginning and actually probably made a design that worked for everybody. So I appreciate any input, and please keep coming coming back. Absolutely. So <coughs> comments can come to uh, Board of Selectmen's office, town administrator, right? Um, and we'll look for feedback from tonight's meeting probably next several weeks yes. right because you're not working on anything else nothing yeah. else yeah, right? <laughs> and we'll sit down with the committee you know and kind of digest all because that's why you have committees right. um so right. because so that there is a process of digesting feeling things out and then we put it back mm -hmm. to the public they give us feedback and we go back to the committee and kind of go back to the ideas that have been put out and keep moving forward. So, so that would be probably our next step is just meeting with the committee, right. discussing the issues that we've right. brought up today, yep. have taken notes. Um, it's also uh, recorded so we right. can go back and look at those. Right. And then Context. in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll put probably, I, I will put together a list of what mm -hmm. the comments were today and kind of looking forward, what, what is the next step? Mm -hmm. 
So to your point about who's gonna pay for what, right? This is the design stage of an anything. There's a fair amount, of, there's somewhere around here, there's a, there's a pail full of drawings that were design stages that didn't necessarily go anywhere. However, to apply for future grants or to go through future scapes, the design piece is the first piece. So this part through this grant round gets us to concept and then costing. If anyone's paid attention to the North Main Street reconstruction, that's a decades long effort. Yeah. Our public hearing is 9.23 at 6 p.m. right here, September 23rd, in this very room, with the DOT and the designer. And it's one of the final public hearings before that project gets legs under it, and it's been a decade in the making. So that, that said, this concept doesn't mean it's going to get built. Mm -hmm. But the concept, it's important to bear in mind that we get community involvement and consensus. Right? And that consensus goes to what Carlos was saying earlier. Yeah, we build it and the pickets show up. But two people were at a meeting for 10 years. Mm -hmm. so it didn't quite play out. Go ahead. Is, is there any way we can communicate better in this town? I had no idea you had a North Main Street project going. I, 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 can't, I, I can't help you there. <laughs> I, I said, is there any way we can get <laughs> we have, we have the, um, the Facebook page for the police department now, which is wonderful. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there that. We wouldn't know about otherwise. There has to be some way of communication. We don't all get the same newspapers, so that doesn't sure. do any good. So, so, something so, that we know what's going on. so from the board's perspective, all meetings are posted both on the website as well as down on the front. Often, I know it's not enough, and we don't have a Facebook page. I get that. Meetings like this, CT Connects were, were sent out saying that this was going to be happening. So that there's there's a variety of ways we kind of go about it. Oddly enough, in this discussion, in this meeting right now, there's no one from the press here. So that doesn't get into a newspaper until they go to FCAT. Good for you, FCAT. Good on FCAT. <laughs> and, and they go, oh, well, maybe there's something there. And you read about it in three or four weeks. So communication. Maybe. maybe. So communication across the residents from any department or any office is always a tricky item. We have tried mailings over the years. There are some that we have to do specifically that are mailings. We post in the papers when they're public hearings and public notices or on the website. We send out CT Connect calls. I, we struggle with it. Now, can we improve? Absolutely. Are we looking to do that? Absolutely. Is it a chore to communicate to the public? No, it's actually not. The chore is getting the public to listen. Yeah, I would say and if you see, and seek it out. If you have suggestions, give them to us because we've literally been in meetings where we've said, okay, well, we can put things on the website. And then some, half the room was like, great. The other half was like, well, we don't look at the website. Right. So, right. I, you know, it's, Mail me a postcard. Like, right. Uh, so it's, and, and to that your happened. example. That was a legit quote. That wasn't a commentary. That was yeah, like, it, it was. Oh, okay. And, and, So there's, one, there's another opportunity for us to reach out. The trick there is to not become desensitized to them because when it really is a code red, damn it, we want you to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. but right? I signed up for emails, but I didn't get any emails. I get letters, but I don't get emails. We'll look at the email server and make sure that that's improved. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that. Also, Great check point. your spam, too, because sometimes yeah, the spam, spam filters too. can be a little picky. So if it's filter it out. So. townofsunderland.ru, it's not us. It's the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we sign on that code tonight when we start getting Yeah, I'm going to yes. send out tomorrow. Send a test in. We'll so if you could just reply back so I know that Great. I have the right email. Thank you. But I appreciate the point. It's, I, as, someone, as someone who's been involved in, in uh, the town almost as long as Tom, the hardest part is getting a uh, room full of people saying, I didn't hear about this. And yet we communicate six different ways. Like, ah. Right. So we'll continue to work it's on it. It's a challenge. Thank you. So thanks everybody for this part of tonight's uh, exercise with respect to School Street. The feedback was good. Thank you. Carlos has got work, and uh, we're going to go on. I appreciate you all. Um, um, the last thing is, if you have any questions or anything that you feel, I'm pretty sure that those will if they go to the calendar, they will get translated into the meeting minutes. So we're going to go to the next Any concerns, any bullet points, anything that you want to comment in this, uh, please send it along. Got it. Thanks, Carlos. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great night.
Rock, you got your headlamp? Yeah. Good job. One of my concerns, too, that I wanted to bring out, and I know I'm really for this Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yes. Yes. That are swimming in the Connecticut River. Yeah, I know. And it's just messing with the Yeah, it's probably not. And I mean, the water is cleaner, but I personally wouldn't be jumping in the river. But the water comes up so fast. It yeah. can really get swept away. Uh, yeah. And then we can have some depth there. So I don't know what we can do well, about that. We can, we can talk to the police so that at least if they go down there on patrols and, I'm, and I'm stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to outburst like that. That's okay. It's that's just okay. been like, really <laughs> So well, that's the thing, though, because we haven't really heard a lot of this, except when people have come to, a few of the people here have been to prior meetings, but... I, I will be going to the meetings more often now. I usually work 50 hours a week, so... I know, it's hard. I, I yeah. know exactly what it's like, it's so I know. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it to this one, and I told her, I'm going. <laughs> well, you got if you live across the street, you can probably just stick something in the mailbox. Here we go. Yeah. You're right, you're right, so, yeah. all right. That's all right, though. Sorry. It's been held in for so long. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's going to be September 23rd. So it's and you're not at all. So again, that's with the DOT as well as the RPI and the public. So 923. What was the second? DOT. Yeah. Uh, so the DOT yep. plus the RPI. And the focus on safety. It was a matter of the sinking up everybody's calendar. Yeah. 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 Girl, I've seen people actually go right around the school bus when they're stuck, like letting kids on and on. I mean, that's, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, hey, FCAT, are we still on? Okay. Yep. I'm Sorry. sure we will. Nice. Don't worry about it. So we're gonna we're gonna hey we gotta start hey. up we gotta re, restart up the uh, Sarah. the summer summer recess. Come on. You know. We we got. We got to. No, we got. No, we have to get back with the rest of our meeting. Okay. Besides, Rock's heavy is here. Well, as a matter of fact, keep an eye on everybody. So, <laughs> so next the up. Center committee is that? What? I, 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 I don't think I should be okay. talking about that tonight. Okay. <laughs> There's enough going on, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I do. I, I, I do need help um, on the river walk with the that mm -hmm. fell down, like the highway department oh, yeah. cleared the path, but there's still the whole tree, and I have, we haven't been able to find anybody. We just, we need somebody with a chainsaw that can come and cut it up. How about the DCR guys who help them take all the knotweed out? Oh, they, I don't, they're, they're coming thinking, to... thinking out loud. That, that's Fish and Wildlife. They're yeah, Fish and Wildlife, right. They're coming with, um, again, like bittersweet yep. and knotweed, but I don't think it's been asked them to... Okay. Uh, We'll work on it over the next couple days. If you have any Torch has changed. Yeah, I know. Somebody yeah. asked. Oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Somebody over the next couple I'm days. I'm sorry about blinding you with my laser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hit you twice, and I'm like, oh my god, I hope I don't blind. But uh, it, was, it was a bank I, shot, I, Carlos. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Red spot right in the middle of my eye. Right All now. I can see is red. So yeah. next next up, we've got select. Nice we got job. minutes from the 12th, right? And I want to re-emphasize that there is a North Main Street construction meeting that's on September 23rd here at this room at 6 p.m. and that is going to be with the Department of Transportation as well as our, our uh, traffic engineers and I assume a room full of the public so 923 day after my wedding anniversary by the way and not that anybody needs to know it uh, 6 p.m. at this location we've got minutes here in front of us Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded for the minutes, and that's the minutes of August 12, 2019. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, three to zero. Next up, uh, board updates. David? Uh, Tom? I'll make it real quick. We had a ditch committee, well, we can't call them ditches anymore, but we had a, <laughs> a water meeting. There you go. Um, and uh, we made some good progress. We we're trying to go after some low hanging fruit, too, for good. some other things to, you know. And we uh, actually talked to Georgia about culverts. Yep. Because um, we really don't have an inventory of culverts, and uh, we're actually talking, Sherry, about George said maybe we'd be able to get UMass into because it would be awesome. I can create a database 
with them or whatever, but if we can get like a get them to um, map them and create a GIS layer, so that would be awesome. Okay. Maybe like a student project, and then get like a even like an Excel worksheet. Even open just a crack. You know, with with where the culverts are, and then we can use that for Thanks maintenance you. and things like that. So we're trying to go after some of that stuff too. So capture and catalog. Yes, and sort of a public service notice too about like you know, landowners, you can clear your own stuff up to the the streams and things like that. So you know, just to sort of public service, especially with now uh, triple E mosquitoes yep. around and things like that. Yep. Fair so, point. So we're trying to look at it, some things like that. So. Okay. Tom? Uh, we have, I think we almost got a third member on the Council of, point, uh, Council of Aging, Marianne, that will probably appoint to that thing tonight. A third yeah. member. We also like to, uh, that we have a meeting next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night, I forgot what day, but uh, I, I believe it's September 5th at uh, 515. Um, if anyone is interested in joining the Council of Aging, and again, because Council of Aging doesn't mean you have to be a senior citizen to uh, serve That's on true. that. That's so true. if you're someone young like Rock Warner, you know, like what mid twenties, he could he could join the uh, <laughs> Council of Aging. Um, but again, and, and part of the thing is that we want a, a, a diverse background. It's mm -hmm. like most things; a diverse background would be good. Um, I I I I will talk to the chief later about the concern, the, the police chief about the concern of neighbors over here, mm -hmm. and maybe we have to change our bylaws and, and put a bylaw, no municipal parking, no, right, no parking right municipal right lots time. after yep. pick a number, um, and the chief can tell us what that is. Mm -hmm. But um, it, and again, if it's something that we don't know about, we we can't right. do anything. But um, now that we know about it, I think that we have to look at that and maybe put, I, I don't think something would be like that would be difficult. So Chief, if you could just look at that. If you would. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Uh, so the ZBA is having a hearing on Wednesday the 26th or Thursday? 28th. 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 And that is specific to some uh, it's specific to a decision about some changes in fence line, speed bumps, some signage, and a change in lighting to lower the lighting and change the color of the lighting at 120 North Main. Everything is specific to 120 North Main. Uh, that is uh, here again in this room. That is the 28th, uh, and that has to do with RDI's um, progress with uh, challenges to the actual permit. And I think uh, that this, I think that all of the process, my feeling is all the process has been very, very helpful to make a better project. And I appreciate uh, everyone's input who's been in uh, this room and other rooms during those uh, hearings, during those presentations. Uh, oftentimes, uh, those in particular, when it really hits close to home, uh, can be, um, they can be emotional. You can uh, bust through that fog and offer really good, at really good suggestions that are acted on. And uh, my feeling is that although a, a, an arduous process, uh, it's still a 40B project, which I'm frankly not a fan of the law, but that's a different discussion. Uh, all of the feedback from the community has made uh, 120 North Main a better project. So mm -hmm. that said, um, we have a letter to sign tonight uh, from uh, Ron Rodak, who approached the town about any interest in the purchase of the restaurant, which is on North Main Street. And to his credit, you know, it's an adjoining abutting property to 120. Is there any reason to consider it? After the 120 North Main Street working group had gone through all of the schemes, and there were 11 total about what would it look like, how could it be, how could it fit, where would it go? Uh, that particular element uh, wasn't one that was recommended, so it's not included in the current project. The current project is, 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 we hope, continuing to go forward. So um, we wrote, uh, we have a response to uh, Rodak family's uh, correspondence to us. And if I could entertain a motion to sign a letter saying that, thank you, but 
you know, at this point in time, there's not, not anything the town is interested in uh, from the Board of Selectmen. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Lastly, uh, from a Selectman's update, the f I reached out to the Superintendent of Schools at Frontier about the Capital Planning Committee. So at the last annual town meeting across all four towns, there was a capital plan that was developed and the bonding arrangement, et cetera, et cetera. Part of that uh, construct is a capital planning committee that is appointed by Frontier School Committee that vets, filters, and then recommends to the school committee what constitutes capital, major maintenance, big capital, all that stuff. Uh, and my, my reach out to the superintendent was to ensure that that committee had been either charged, which they have, and be appointed, which they have not. And they're going to take that action up in the first one or two school committee meetings, which are about to begin. So I didn't want to heap anything else on them. I just figured I'd ask. Uh, and that's all I have. Uh, Sherry, do you have any updates? I do. Uh, a couple of um, bid awards or considerations. Um, Eric's here to talk about the police mm -hmm. cruiser. Yep. He solicited, solicited bids through the um, state contract. Yep. And then the other one would be um, fuel awards. Uh, we have recommendations. So fuel meaning annual fuel purchase? Yes, for diesel and for gasoline. Okay. And how'd they come in this year? Uh, the low ask. bid for diesel is A.R. Sandry, and hmm. his bid is $230 um, with the $0.24 cent tax. It brings us to $254.9 um, for the um, purchase of diesel per gallon. Okay. And the low bid for gasoline was um, D.K. Burke at $229.52. Brilliant. Is that a recommendation from? That is a recommendation. Okay. Motion. Second. The motion made and seconded. This is for the diesel annual diesel purchase for vehicles, as well as the annual uh, gasoline uh, purchase. These are by gallon. Is the are the volumes consistent or the volumes ticked up from prior years? And I'll, I'll weigh this on on the chief as well. Are the volumes the same or have they increased? Uh, well, my my dollar amount. Right. We've stayed within that. So I think we have gone up. Um, by miles. By miles and gallons. Okay. Okay. Great. The reason I asked that is because we get to the end and you're like, ah, we had a whole bunch more patrols and so. Yeah, okay. Very fine. good. So the motion is made and seconded. Thank you for the discussion, Chief. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So ARS Andrew for uh, diesel and uh, Burke out of uh, Chelsea for uh, gasoline. Okay. Chief Cruisers. You got a bunch of them. <laughs> so you want to buy one. We have an well, appropriation. The, the town to yeah. the appropriation. Yep. Uh, in the past, we had started to look at uh, the increases. We heard that the cost for the equipment were going to go up and the cost for the cruises were going to go yep. up. This is the first year that they've offered the hybrid mm -hmm. uh, before on the PID, which is a piece of um, I know we weren't looking at a larger engine like the V8s. We're not looking at those. So those out. Uh, the PIUs that we were able to get, we had a couple of different quotes. Some of them mm -hmm. were purpose built, so one company would you buy the car and the equipment, they do it all together. Yep. We also looked at other companies that would do just the car and then outsource it to another company. Um, and I still haven't been able to get it down below the down. Below the appropriation. The appropriation. Yeah. yeah, got it. So I'm not coming here to ask for more money. No. And anyway, um, all I wanted to do is let you know that while we went through that, I also found another vehicle that was it is not the Ford um, uh, hybrid, mm -hmm. but it is also an all-wheel drive six-cylinder like the Ford was, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the Dodge Durango. Mm -hmm. um, they do come in eight-cylinder, but it was expressed as explicitly that we're not looking at an engine that size. We wanted the V6, and when they did so, they furnished the quote um, from uh, Central Jeep Dodge Durango, and then the vendor is Global Public Safety. Mm -hmm. They did our most recent insurance concern. Yep. Um, so with those, um, we have the estimates uh, from them. Um, the, the main one is obviously the cruiser itself. I want to say, uh, I have my phone, uh, 
72. Or um, Chrysler Jeep Dodge? Yes. Yeah, 31920 and, and all the other ones we were looking at, um, the vehicles were 36 to 39. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, historically, we went through MHQ, we went through Adamson, and we've gone through Global, yeah. and they've been anywhere between 11 and 15,000. To build it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Key agents, blue yeah. lights, sirens, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Paint, stickers. Numbers? Chief, I noticed on, on well, I, I guess, so you're, you're looking at the 3.6 V6, right? Um, this, is this, this vehicle is to replace one of your sedans? Yeah, the last sedan that we have. Okay. So, so going forward, um, so now we're basically our vehicles are becoming all-wheel drives, anyways, for the most part. As of right now, the only sedans that I've been able to find are either the Dodge Charger, yeah, um, which is the eight-cylinder, or the um, Ford Energy, which is the electric cruiser, yeah, and then the um, Chevy Volt. Yeah, um, and, and again, my, my only question, my only question is, my, my I guess my biggest question is, we bought we when we first started buying a four wheel drive specific, um, it was to handle the the mountain roads and the, the the bad weather, but now I don't know will we have to spec out a specific SUV type like. Thanks. You have now, or are we good with just the all-wheel drives? We should be good with the all-wheel drives. Uh, uh, most of the time, I've been here for three years now. So yep. we, as we've gone in the woods, we've been uh, working with the fire department. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a time where we're going to say, uh, which we had a higher vehicle, but uh, in the three years I've been here, we haven't seen that. The Tahoe that we currently have is the biggest one that we have. It can go over some of the larger terrain, yep. uh, but it's also wider. I didn't look at any of the towels that are yeah. on the market now to replace this. I was trying to find a, a police uh, utility vehicle because they eventually got rid of these sedans. Um, okay. How, how have, have you looked into the uh, the maintenance on on the Dodge, the Durango's? Have Have you looked? Have you talked, or have you talked to any other departments that have this vehicle? So the uh, one of the departments north of us has primarily Dodge Chargers. Durango's, um, one of the Durango's. Well, if you want the big, you might as well just scoop all the chargers and just go for the Hellcat, but yeah. I, I mean, no, no, don't, no for that. oh yeah, I mean, um, don't even worry about the chargers, but. But the, um, uh, the Durango, uh, I believe he has two of them, one of them was giving them problems, but they, from what they explained, it was the vehicles, as they progressed, were, were fixed, the issues were resolved. Yeah. Um, so I believe the one he has now does have any issues with. Um, Bernison has a couple of them. Okay, so and I guess my question would be, I mean, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable with the the Dodge versus maintaining your continuity and fleet with um, with the Fords? And we have, we have a Chevy Tahoe, we have the Ford stands, and then the Ford um, the Ford PIE, the original one. Yeah. Uh, one of the sedans was for um, T Bone, and that how we ended up getting the first PIU, mm -hmm. and then now um, the second PIU we have, we got that through a uh, animal accident, and then now we're hoping to replace the last sedan with the only other vehicle they have on the market. We weren't really looking at SUVs in particular, yeah. but that's, I guess, the about to go. Uh, so what I, I don't, I don't see too much of a change for uh, cost between the Dodge Durango and um. How about interchangeability of parts, like it, on replacement? I mean, I mean, are, once you once you start down with a Dodge, are you more or less committing to that to that make for that eight at least one vehicle, or or how, how or like the radio can go into any 
Yeah, I mean, the center consoles are set up, so all the uh, initial set, the lighting switches, the radio scanners, that's all part of it. You have the uh, mounting brackets for the laptops, that's all interchangeable. It's the cages and the size of the light bar on top, if you get a light bar on top. Not to fit the specific windows, vehicle. That handles it different. Um, the PIA that we're looking at, I think that's the reason why I can't get the cost down lower than I can for the, the current hybrid model, is because they don't fit the existing model that we have now. So even if we were able to swap all the stuff that we have in the 2017 and put it into 2020, it wouldn't fit. So it would still be a cost for, for buying yeah. these things anyways. Okay. I, I, I also wonder, Chief, have, have, have you and, and the LE community have what would happen to the to two officers in Deerfield? It's, it's, it's not an uncommon occurrence for LE people. Um, and, and some talk about there's too, much, too many lights and so have, have you talked about that and when you set up the car you're the next cruiser I, it, it's concerning I mean sure. I remember the last officer that was struck who, who didn't come home to his his wife and family that happened in Deerfield so I mean and it was almost the same same scenario except they he hadn't stopped a um, a person he was some there was this offer an assistant to people that to to uh, that were lost sure. A lot of the vendors, like uh, the ones that MX2 uses, or Global Public Safety, or Addison, they're changing the uh, lighting setup. So, from what I could gather, what they were talking about, the setup was it's kind of like the highway setup. So, when the vehicle is in motion, when it's in drive, the lights are full, uh, full power and activated. When the vehicle gets in the park, they dim down or they reduce the intensity. Um, so. I think that explains why the MHQ bid was that much higher because that was the entire truck instead of you know, just a light bar. Uh, sometimes people get away with not dimming down the intensity on the inside lights because they're hidden behind the, the back window tint. Um, but a lot of the vendors are looking at doing that, they're already changing that. So, so a lot of the departments are getting that whether they want it to or not. Um, I know when I talked to uh, Mr. Anderson at MHQ, that was one of the biggest selling points that he had for uh, the light. Uh, it's because when it's off of highway mode or when you put the car into park, one of our cruisers does that now. When you put the car in the park, uh, some of the other lights do either lower intensity and then the uh, Opticom switch, which is the one for the traffic lights, that also shuts off. Um, so they're already started doing that even for the 2017, 2018 models, and they're continuing with that uh, as it comes on. Okay. I, and again, I'm just. I, I, and again, I think we need to do whatever is best for our our officers. And and it's just something. Maybe it's because of my age, but it seems like when they, when there's bright lights on, those yeah. bright light, it's almost like you're a moth and you're drawn towards those right. lights. They're very distracting. Yeah. Back in the day, I mean, this was like five six years ago, even you could request uh, the company when they installed them to have a high low switch. So when you did stop somebody at night and you had them stop, you could press that button and it would already lower the intensity. These companies are getting away from that and they're already just putting it just in. Just doing automatic like that. Yeah. So once that car goes in the park, it then lowers down. Um, of course, the cost is probably even more than normal, but you know, we have to do it. Yeah, I, I, safe, safety is a cool. And the other thing is I see that it's just black. You know, Chief, I love no, black and white. Yeah, I know. <coughs> you, you know that. No, no, it's... It, it's it just says black, but it's, it's, we have to decide whether or not it's going to be the full door or the half door. Okay. You know, one of the cars will end up becoming black and white. Yes, with Thank markings you. and stickers, yes. You're not the only two people in the control room, so. I, I, hey, look, I, I, still, I still say the... the I, I understand the other stuff, but I also understand, you know, the scene. You want, just like... People may not understand why motorcycles are are considered in poli community policing, but what I've been told is that um, people are much more apt to go up to a motorcycle officer versus an officer sitting in a cruiser. I don't know why, um, but that's what they say. That that that's one reason. So I just think that you know. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have to decide on um, trying to see the dollar amount between painting the doors or vinyl wrapping them. Yep. Oh, yeah, that could be less expensive. Yeah, I gotta figure out which one. Which yeah. one is gonna be less expensive? This is what I wanna go for. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Thank you, Chair. Any questions with respect to the chief? Nope. I have two if I could, chief. So I see a spread. I don't see a complete total from one vendor. I, I see a spread of 59,000 from one and 31,000 from another. And immediately my warning signs go up, right? So you wanna understand, well, well, I don't quite understand that there's a total here or not by the way the proposal is sent out. It looks like there's similar overlap between some markings. Uh, I don't see this call as being built out at all, right? This one's got vendor A. Vendor B has got 65 lines equaling 59,000. Vendor C has got 69 lines, but there's no total yet. So I struggle a little bit with A heading toward low bid. Right? I get it, we have to stand inside of appropriation. I completely understand that, and I appreciate all the work you and Sherry have done on this. But the spread between a $20,000 spread for a, a vehicle, I immediately want to know why. Sure. And, and, and so, yeah, anyway. So that, that, over there. Yeah. that one is just for the truck. Yeah. That was 40, I think, uh, 42. But that was the uh, retail cost, the MSRP. Yeah. So uh, the email I got after that said so we'd probably get dropped down to 39. Yep. So thirty nine thousand that leaves us around eleven thousand to go. Yep. And the the build out for the equipment yep. goes anywhere between eleven and fifteen. Right. Uh, if you remember car one, which is the black and white that we have yep. the first uh, PIU that we got, uh, that was fifteen five. Yep. The second PIU we got was built under ten because mm -hmm. it was insurance and the sure. insurance only gave us thirty eight thousand to build it. So we had to cut a lot of that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Lights, uh, we only had a few lights. Um, I don't see us being able to do that again. Um, just, yeah, circumstance, right? There's, there's no way we'd be on the push bumper and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, the 59 one, that's from the other company. Yeah. Uh, that's full build out, everything all Done. Done, right. That's truck, uh, cage, lights, and everything. Um, Global and Adamson are the other two companies that we've used in yep. the past. So um, the last Adamson uh, quote that I got was 15 five. Trying to get a lower quote. Yep. That's why I'm trying to get that down lower because that would then get applied <coughs> to um, the, uh, the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be from um, uh, you know the name? Uh, Central yep. uh, Dodge or whether it be from uh, Mockhart. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Out in this area, yep. Basically. Well, I mean, in the area. Uh, the last PIU we got was from Stone. Right. Um, no, I'm sorry. That was the first PIU. The second PIU came from uh, CMG, which is um, Colonial Motor Group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we're, we're trying to piece together a uh, equipment vendor with the um, truck vendor. Got it. Uh, and that's that's why they're kind of messed up. Yeah. Mark Hardy gave us that big giant one, which is great, but it's just the truck. Couldn't figure out what that was in there. There's like a lot of wiring, and they mentioned stuff that overlapped with this one. I'm like, ah. And the next few one is uh, full build out lights, cages, yep. radar, mounting, everything. Right. Um, I'm sure there, there, there could be some wiggle if we could try to take some things out of that. Um, but I don't see there's any way I can cut 90, 800. Sure. Um, yeah, off of. Yeah, I mean, again, to me, the spread, you're talking about a nearly 100% spread. And from a simple, per I mean, as an individual buyer, I'd go, why? As, as, as you know, putting my fiduciary responsibilities on as a member of the board, I'm like, yep. why? But my eyes are wider. Yep. Like, what the hell is that all about? Yeah. Uh, and it's basically the same truck. Yeah. Um, well, this is, this is Dodge Ford, right? Well, yeah, so if I go, yeah. so this, yeah, yeah so, so Dodge, 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 yeah, so that's yeah. 32. This is Ford um, built out. Built out, but that's if you flip it over, it's like forty and change. Thirty seven. So thirty seven. For the truck. Yep. And this is thirty two for the truck. Yep. But so this is built out. No. This ah. is just the truck. Uh, straight. Got yeah. it. No no no. This is just the truck. Understood. The the, the, the global uh rule that I, I sent back because it was still Got too it. high. So from a base price, the, there are a thousand bucks of 
but basically a thousand bucks a piece, right? Right, thirty-one to thirty-seven. So, 32, so six, to the, six, yeah, yeah. four, five thousand, five thousand yep. um, dollars in, uh, for base. And then you've and then got you add all the, the adder. This got is, it. Yeah, this is eighteen more. Right. I, I can. I, I know I can get it down to fifteen, mm -hmm. not lower. Yep. But I can't drop. There's no way I cut ninety eight hundred dollars. Sure. That. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it, it upsets me because I normally would have the stuff ready and going before July one, yep. so I could say, okay, here we go. Or the truck, but right? It's just been Good. Say, so, listen, I only got fifty thousand. Yeah, but and I, I'll be honest with you. I thought it was going high. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you look at it, the, the first PIU we got, we got built up for forty-six thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, you add on eighty percent cost for the other vendors. Ford's going to go up more. Here we are. Fifty grand should be easy. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Uh, why? It's, it's just huh. Huh. Uh, and I know we're not dealing with time dealing with either. But, sure. Uh, I was really open to also try to get. Last year's model, yep. or the year before. That's what we locked out with the insurance truck. Uh, that worked out because that was a uh, previous year model. Mm -hmm. That's why we were able to get that for 27 mm -hmm. and not 32. Got you know, it. You know. um, so I have a question of the board, right? If, if, if keeping like vehicles and like equipment in kind, I have two questions for the board. Um, is there any reason to not simply go call a special and ask for 9,000, this is question one, 9,000 additional dollars to get the vehicle that matches what you've already got, right? That's question one. For the most part, right? yeah. For the most part. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's the first question. The second question is, does anybody lease these things? Yeah, I have been leases. I was in a department that leased. Uh, I don't recommend leasing the same vehicle mm -hmm. times two. Yep. Uh, because if one goes bad, the other one's gonna go bad, and sure. you've inherited Totally get it. Yeah, timing and yeah, yeah acquisition. Yeah. I totally I, understand that. I haven't that. looked into the leasing uh, yep. option before. Yep. Um, mostly because we were awarded fifty thousand dollars. Let's just go with it. Right. So that's that's the reason why. I need and I don't mean to throw a wrench in it, but no, there are communities around who lease like leasing. really big equipment, yeah. and, and vehicles are one of the things they lease as well. Yeah. So th I guess those two questions are out for me yeah. on the table for the board. Do you, uh, is it the prerogative to go back and? Or, you know, pick pick up a vehicle that's built out, and the assumption is we get from 32. We'll use 32 to less than 50 with a build out, right? The assumption is we can get there. It's not called out here. This one's called out, and again, there's a six thousand dollar spread, six thousand and change, yeah, basically six thousand dollar spread. Uh, but built out, you know, it's fifty nine thousand dollars. If this is built out. It, the assumption is it's going to be a proportionate total. When you get to the end, you're like, oh, it should be under 50. Yeah. I haven't, going, I haven't going off of what the last bits, not last bits, the last uh, invoices that we paid yep. for a full build out yep. was about 55. Okay. And that added on to the 37. Got it. It's going to be 48. Right. So it begs the question do we need a proposal from these guys or from whoever is doing the build out? This is a turnkey, this is a truck, or this is a, a base vehicle. Yeah, that's from that's from them, and then Global will get me the. Uh, Got it. The, uh, yeah, the uncost. Yeah. So should we get the should we get the build out cost from Global? I don't know. Dodges or dodges are harder to work on, or I don't know. I don't know. But here it looks like again startling because a build out versus a base not having the build out. What do we do? Anyway. Yeah, the first the first quote I got from from Global was too high, so we Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I'm just waiting for that to come back. Okay. But even that one was, um, wasn't putting us over here. Got it. So the general condition of the current fleet, we want to get rid of one. I totally understand that. It's the oldest one. Yeah. 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 I would like to try to, uh, to replace that one. Um, that's the Cron That's yep. the last V8 that yep. we have. So which department gets that one? I say that I say that tongue in cheek. We're gonna talk about disposing an old one, which we disposed of once. <laughs> anyway, up well, for sale. Part, they kind of discourage against that in green communities too, because you're just perpetuating poor sure. fuel use. Totally get that. You know, it's just like pass the junker down to somebody else. Right. You know? <laughs> you're not supposed to call them junkers when they're still around, yeah. right? Then they start breaking down on you. They have they're feelings too, you know. They're gonna start to feel bad, right? <laughs> I know. Right. 
So they're not making smart police cars at all, you know? Well, and, and there are, <laughs> I, I, there are plenty of towns that have the electric cruisers. Yeah, no. Uh, mostly right now, there's admin vehicles. Yeah, so like right. Jeep right. Or the tenant, the deputy. So I think um, the jury's still out on how right. durable they are and yeah, other guess, issues. Being, it, it could be the only car on duty uh, with the officer. Yep. I, I'm kind of hesitant. I kind of want to yep. And then even I have some hesitation with the, the hybrids, the first year. Right. I'm a little skeptical about that. Sure. Oh, um, yeah. So with the hybrid, do we have to get a charging station? No. It's Got not it. fully electric. Got it. But the Volt, I think, is. Or I've seen it both ways. I've seen hybrids that charge as well. So that's yeah. why I asked the question. Yeah. I think that I think it just runs the generator, the gas, in the Volt, I think. Yeah. So should we see a build out quote and then take a vote on one or leave it up to the procurement officer or the chief? I mean uh, leave it up to the procurement officer, Scott. Okay. I, I mean the chief the chief has to get what he needs in the cruiser. So Understood. Yep. If he's gonna come in over you know, the bill out's above fifty thousand, right. he's gotta come talk to us. Right. Okay. Right. I, that's why I tried getting another vehicle. Yeah. It would be a nice fight on town meeting floor next three so, years from now when you ask for 60. Um, <coughs> I remember when I used to be able to build a car with lights and sirens for 34,000. Mm -hmm. Oh, we remember that too. Yep. It wasn't that, it wasn't that it was long, that long ago. ago. <laughs> well, right. so, so the Ford is a, actually a hybrid though. It's a hybrid version. Is it the first year that they have the? From what I've been told by the uh, the vendors, the first. So uh, the first time they based on the Explorer? It's not like I want to do first year. So they don't call it Explorer. Yeah, Explorer. Wow. The, the, the passenger you? side. Not first year. They can label it whatever they want, but it's yeah. the Explorer it's chassis. Year, and, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they've basically go. gotten themselves out of the I didn't car market. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe with the exception of the Mustang, they're, they're, they're out. next year, right? Or yeah. like I said, two years. But years ago, they got rid of the sedans. Right, so that's two. Years ago, they got rid of the sedans. Correct. And right. We had the PIUs, which yeah. is what we have now. Well, Scott and I were just talking about the for being as the first year, first model year, of first anything. model year, the hybrid. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, any anyone. Anyway. <laughs> right, right. Stay away from a first year. Seven thirty seven max was a bit of a problem the first year too. A little bit. Right? So yeah. and just on takeoff. Just on takeoffs, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's only half the so well, gee, I, 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 I I would say I would say go ahead. I you know, any and again I long as I mean if I was going to buy a Dodge, I might as well buy the Hellcat, though. I'm, I'm geez, Chief. I, I, have, I know. Privately, I have a, a Charger. It's a V6. Mm -hmm. But the police package is only a V8. I don't get it. Well, I do get it. But I yeah. it should be so so, so you, the Durango's a V8. No. This Durango's is a V6. V6. Yeah. No, that Charger, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Civilian all-wheel drive. Yeah. It's a V6. The police package is only a V8. I can get the V6 all-wheel, but I have to buy the civilian version. Right. And then there's a whole host of other models. So we didn't even look at that because I knew it was just a bad taste. So I, when, I, when they talked to me about the Durango, he says, oh, they come in both, the eights and the sixes. And I said, well, do a call for the six. Sure. And ask me all the time. Cool. Yeah, we don't need to go anywhere zero to sixty really quick around here, do we? Got a, it's, got a, it's got a uh, well. I won't, I won't say what the specification of top speed listed is, but it is a top speed. Mm -hmm. that we probably don't have to get to. No. I would. I would I never would think so. Officer. No. Okay. All right, Scott, okay. what do you want for motion? Uh, move to allow the chief and the procurement officer to decide on the cruiser and motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Thank you, Chief. Thank I appreciate chief. it. I know it's chief challenging. Can. I get it, but. Can you talk with uh, Sherry about what we can do about the. Uh, yes. We talked earlier. Yep. And, and maybe it's a. I don't know if there's anything in your jurisdiction can do now or if we need to do a. To kind of gloss over, we have been dealing with. Uh, the couple, the male and the female. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not two guys. Um, we have been dealing with them. Um, yeah. Many different parts of town, not just here. Yeah. But long, but long term, maybe we need to put something, you know, in effect also. Yeah. No, I and may, that. May, maybe, you know, we talked to Sherry. Maybe there's a bylaw that one of your uh, in about parking on municipal lots. Sure. I, I, I don't think it's an unusual bylaw. I think a lot of places right. have them. I mean, they, they have them. They have them on uh, federal lands. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't. If Can't you want park to go over surf there. casting on on the national seashore, you have to have a special thing put in your windshield that says that you're surf surf casting because they don't allow overnight parking. That's right. And just for my own information, that's 
100% town property is not like library property where it's private. Town, it's town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All, all town. All town. Okay, thank you, Chief. I appreciate you, that. Chief. Thank you. Keep, keep, uh, keep doing the good work you do. Okay, next up we have a village center committee appointment request. Uh, James Hool is asked to be on the village center uh, committee. It's a working group. Yep. Uh, I appreciate Jim uh, volunteering for this. Yep. And uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, motion. Second. Do we, motion. do we have, are, are we accepting? I mean, Greg Hamill's also requested. Greg Hamill? Greg Hamill? I haven't Glenn. seen it. Glenn or Greg? Huh? Glenn or Greg? Glenn. Oh, Glenn Hamill. Okay. Glenn Hamill. Haven't I haven't seen, seen that one yet. From him. Well, he talked to me. Okay. Oh. I think Rock, too, was interested. He, he own, he's the owner of the. Uh, mm -hmm. He runs the uh, Sun of the Corner store, so. That would make sense. Two, two of our business reps. Mm -hmm. So if we could maybe have a list at uh, our next meeting about who's inquired, if any. Okay. And then uh, get that get that group composed. And then yep. uh, we have the charge already in place. So yep. get them rolling. Correct. Okay. So we have a motion made and seconded for uh, James Hool. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And next up, we have Council of Aging appointment request. Marianne Kowalik. Would just like the motion? Uh, second on that. Motion's made and seconded to keep the Energizer Bunny going. She just keeps going and yep. going and going and serving the town. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. Okay. We have uh, Crown Vic, the chief does not want anymore, meaning the fire chief. So. Oh, wait a you need a vehicle, right? It's like a bad penny. It's yeah. just like, oh boy. So uh, this this is a recommendation from the fire chief. Uh, dispose of the cruiser. Uh, we have a policy for disposal of surplus equipment. I think all we have to do is declare it surplus, and then the policy takes care of itself. It's under five thousand dollars. I think a crown Vic from nineteen sixty four. Probably is not going to hit the five thousand. Right, right. So uh, that said, motion, motion, surplus, second. Motion is made and seconded to declare surplus. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And then lastly, we have the FY twenty representative of the Franklin Regional Planning Board from the Board of Selectmen. Do we have any interested parties out there in the world or want to be appointed? Uh -huh. Is this something we put of. out there, or is it one of us specifically? No, it's, it can be anybody. Can be anybody. Yeah. I say we one put it out first, and then yeah. let's see if somebody. So wants let's it. let's put this out for our next until our next I meeting. I thought David's our alternate, anyways, right? That's a different. It's um, all waste, I guess. So we could. So there's a there's currently an opening of the regional planning board mm -hmm. for the COG, and if you're interested. Uh, you can contact our office either via the website and email or call 665-1441. If we don't hear from anybody in the next two weeks, call now. Um, the next two weeks before our next meeting, we'll uh, make an appointment. So if you're home watching, even thinking about it, and next meeting your name gets called, it's too late. Maybe we could entice them with an old Crown Vic. Exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> to take them to the meeting. No. Okay, so that'll be on for our next meeting. Uh, nine two. This office is closed in observance Labor of Labor Day. Day. We're on back. We're back here at nine six, September sixth. Because it's a Friday. Yeah, why I don't that? care. Oh, do I? Have I just want to make sure. Nine sixteen. Maybe is that what happened? I'm not sure. Is that what it's supposed to be? Is that? Let's take a look Monday? at that. <laughs> was I wasn't nine sixteen. Sure. Nine six. Uh, and then more yeah, importantly, that's Monday. Yeah. More okay. importantly, the next time we actually meet, which is not that important. Uh, nine twenty three, September twenty third, nineteen. 6 p.m. This building, it is the Mass DOT public hearing with our traffic engineer, the Mass DOT, and everybody who's interested because we're at that design state where that's going and going and gone as far as design goes. And it's, you know, to, to illustrate you get, you get, the. Oh, sorry. You get, another, you get another chance to talk to our engineer as well as the DOT, express your concerns, and the goal is to um, get our design accepted by the Mass DOT with comments. Now, there have been a series of exceptions that are already approved mm -hmm. that came out of public meetings and great input from the community, but the reality is this is with the DOT in the room. So, that said, 
September 23rd, 6 p.m., this building. FCAT will be on the game. I'll be here. Good job. <laughs> okay, anything else before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Chair, any closing comments? Excellent. Don't use, don't, don't use nuclear weapons to stop hurricanes? Correct. Good job. All those in favor of adjourning? Well, I'll just say one thing. School is no, starting don't, don't this talk, week. No, don't talk about the hurricane. <laughs> no, 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 not the hurricane. Okay. Just a reminder to folks that school is starting this week. Large yellow vehicles will be back Great on the point. road. Please drive carefully, and for the love of God, do not pass a school bus that is stopped with people boarding or exiting the vehicle. Nothing as is that important. As much as you're in a rush, yes. Nothing is that important. That's all I have to say. Motion to adjourn. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Tom doesn't want to. No. <laughs> da David came up the stairs. David said, "Oh, it looks like we have a light agenda tonight." <laughs> yeah, you do. I forgot about the first time. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so uh, we'll call us out three to zero, Sherry. Call us out at eight fifty nine.